What's your that's when the bully left me alone story? When I was in elementary school I had to ride the bus to school. We had assigned seats, and I was put next to this high school kid, freshman slash sophomore, for the first part of the route, until he would transfer off to another bus going to the high school. He was extremely overweight and a giant douche, emphasis on giant. He would do little bully-like things like make fun of me to get others to laugh at me, hit me with spitwoods, whatever. Annoying but not the end of the world. One week he decided to start physically bullying me by putting his backpack against me and smashing me as hard and as long as he could against the window every day. It hurt, it was gross, and I was tired of his sheet. So on that Friday I brought a knife my parents had picked up at an antique store and stashed it in my jacket. Sure enough, he pulled the same stunt where he smashed me with his backpack, but this time I slid the knife into one of the outer pockets w slash o him knowing. I then started a physical fight with him to get the bus driver's attention. She pulled the bus over and came to figure out what the commotion was all about. I then proceeded to claim that he had smashed me against the window and then started hitting me while threatening me with a knife that he had put in one of his backpack pockets. She took his backpack, found the knife, and before I knew it school officials were whisking him away at the transfer stop. I don't know what happened to him or how much trouble he got into, but I never saw him again. Reposted from a similar question that I replied to about a year or so ago. I was the token quiet chubby kid in school, you know, the one who was into computers and nerdy things like that, while everyone else was playing sports and going to parties and such. I became a magnet for bullies and all of my classmates knew I was a wuss. When it started, and I fought back I got into trouble with both the school and my mother, so I quickly learned to sit there and do nothing while the world picked on me, until. In 8th grade all students were expected to shower after gym class. It was a gang shower, of course, and pimply faced chubby me wasn't looking forward to it. There was one kid, Scott, who wouldn't leave me alone. He was always snapping towels at me, pushing me around, and otherwise bullying me, while his friends looked on and laughed. I hated him with a vengeance. One winter day I had just finished showering, and was getting back into my clothes, when Scott decided to start with me. Here's a scene. Two rows of lockers facing each other, about 8 feet apart, with a bench running between them. I was on one side of the bench and Scott was on the other. When he started up with me, I turned my back to him and mumbled leave me alone. He pushed me into the lockers, hard. My head hit the lockers and I saw stars. Scott was now screaming at me and the other boys in the locker room were starting to form a circle. Scott moved to the same side of the bench as me and was slapping the back of my head and taunting me, but all I heard was laughter. I snapped. I spun around and shoved Scott as hard as I could, screaming as I did it. The back of his legs hit the bench and he toppled back. The back of his head hit the lockers and his left arm flew into his open locker. Before he could move I reached over, grabbed the locker door, and slammed it as hard as I could into his left arm. The door caught and pinned his arm inside. He screamed. I was screaming and crying, and I don't know what else. Someone grabbed me and pulled me off of him and dragged me into the gym teacher's office while all hell broke loose in the locker room. I don't remember much after that. I remember the gym teacher yelling at me. I remember the guidance counselor getting my stuff from my locker and me changing in the gym teacher's office. I remember washing blood off my hands. And I remember being escorted from the gym teacher's office to the principal's office. I was sent home, suspended for two days for fighting. The fight was on a Wednesday, I was suspended Thursday and Friday, and returned to school on Monday. That Monday was very weird. People looked at me, pointed at me, whispered about me. I would walk down the hall and people would see me and get out of my way. One of my friends, who wasn't in the locker room that day, but heard about it afterwards told me that there was a rumor going around that I was smiling when I was beating up Scott. Lunch was exceptional. I sat with my friends as I usually did, and we made small talk about whatever video games we were playing or whatever, but at the tables all around me nobody was talking, and I could feel them watching me. I looked over at the table where Scott and his friends always sat, but the table was empty. Scott returned to the school the following Wednesday. His home room was one door down from mine, so I saw him when he walked down the hallway. His arm was in a cast, 
his left eye was purple, his nose was clearly still swollen, his lips and cheek were tinged yellow and green, he had stitches on his left ear, and his left arm was in a cast and a sling. He made eye contact with me for a moment, then looked down. He walked past me without saying a word. I found out later that Scott had a minor concussion, his arm was broken in three places, he had severe lacerations on his arm, and apparently I beat the sheet out of his face when he went down. He lost a lot of blood. The latch on the locker door had stuck closed, and they had to cut the door in order to release Scott's arm. He went to the hospital for stitches and to set the arm. He was out of school for 4 days, I don't know if he was suspended or if it was the result of my beating on him. Whatever the case was, that was the last time Scott or his friends ever got close to me, and with a couple of exceptions in high school, the last time I was bullied. I was still the token nerdy chubby kid, but word had gotten around. Edit, I read all of the replies to this, and I want to clarify a few things. First, it needs to be understood that my response to Scott was neither rational nor planned. I didn't attack him thinking, hey, if I can lay him out then maybe he'll leave me alone. I snapped. It was an instant fight or flight response to the fact that I was, at that moment, and for countless moments in the years preceding, being attacked. I don't even remember the fight per se. I remember pushing him back, and I remember slamming the locker door, but I don't remember actually hitting him at all. Obviously I did, and there was a locker room full of witnesses to that effect, but I have absolutely no memory of doing it. That doesn't make it automatically right or justified, but it does put things into perspective. Ask yourself if you had absolutely no spine of your own and literally every school day was a veritable hellhole of being picked on, pushed around, mocked, and made to feel inferior, what would it take to make you snap? Second, I'm neither proud nor ashamed of my actions. The arguments could be made in either direction. Some folks will say that I should be proud of sticking up for myself, especially when the school didn't. Others will say I should be ashamed of beating the guy up so badly that I overreacted to the whole situation. Blame could be placed on a number of people or circumstances. Death by a thousand cuts means that nobody carries the entirety of the blame. My only personal feelings about the whole thing is a certain measure of relief and gratitude. Had Scott not been the one to pull my trigger then either my school days would have been filled with years more bullying, or someone else may have taken Scott's place and the outcome may not have been as favorable. So either way, I'm relieved and grateful for what and how things happened. I was at soccer camp one summer, must have been 12 or so. This one a shat of a kid, probably about a year older and 6 inches taller than me was being a dick. For example, came to lunch and all my friends were sitting there, he was among them. As I sat down, he asked me to raise my arm, so I did. Saw that I only had a little bit of armpit hair, I was faking 12 years old, guy, gym a break, and started making fun of me in front of my friends. I shrugged it off, because I recognized his bullshit for what it was. Sat down and ate lunch, no big deal. A couple days later I'm standing in line waiting for something, none of my friends with me. I'm not paying attention to much, when out of nowhere someone says hey, does this hurt? And before it even registered in my brain, I felt what was the cold, sharp end of a soda can tap, freshly torn from its can scrape across the back of my neck. I instinctively jabbed my elbow back as hard as I could, and felt the blow sink home into his gut. I turned around, and it was that same faking bully kid from the other day. He sank back as I brought my arm to my neck to check for blood. What the hell, man? He demanded. I just wanted to know what it felt like. He was standing up tall now, still a few inches taller than me, and puffing his chest out. What the fuck do you think it felt like? I asked him, obviously pissed. You wanna know, scrape it across your own neck, dumbass. I stood right up to him, refusing to back down. All anger, no fear, ready to fight this faker, even if he was bigger. He backed down, not actually thinking I was going to stand up for myself. Little insecure sheet. A bully in my school, we'll call her V, came from a very well respected family in the town. It was a huge deal to V, to keep her image up, having the perfect family that did no wrong was very important to her. She always bragged about her mother's charity work, her dad's ranch, her spot in the church choir, all the aspects of her perfect life. 
on the day of our 8th grade graduation, V's family hosted a brunch for all of our class. While there, I went to the bathroom at some point. While I was in there, I stepped on something sharp. It was a needle. What the fuck? Why is there a needle on the ground? Whatever, I washed my foot off, threw the needle away, and went back to my classmates to enjoy the day. Two weeks later, we had a BPA, Business Professionals of America, a school program, fundraiser for the upcoming school year. Usually, V's mom volunteers to help out with fundraisers, but she was nowhere to be found. Strange, but not a big deal. V and I did have one close mutual friend, RR and I were working on cleaning up after the fundraiser, when she told me that V's mom was in rehab for the fourth time in two years, heroin addict. So school comes in a few months, and V is making fun of my boyfriend, K, for living with his broke brother, and not being able to be on the golf team anymore, because he had to get a job, and help pay bills. K was always shy, not really willing to speak up for himself. So when V said well, it's not like you'll be missed on the team, you can't even afford good clubs. I looked at her and said sure, K and his brother are poor, sucks for him, but at least his brother isn't a junkie. Her jaw dropped, and although it was only K, R, and I around, I could tell she was extremely embarrassed. After that, she never spoke to or about K and I again. Got, high school me could be a beach sometimes. I used to get bullied a lot in elementary and middle school. I was always a big kid, one of the biggest in school, but I was a real pushover, and was always too afraid to retaliate in large part, and you folks are gonna love this one, because of zero tolerance policies. I was so afraid of getting in trouble, that I was never willing to fight back, which only made me a bigger target, and of course the teachers did nothing about this, but give me inane advice, that only would have made things worse like just firmly tell them to stop or come get a teacher. Finally in 7th grade, after more than 4 years of this kind of bullying, I'd had enough. I was getting picked on by a kid, who was much smaller than me, but for some reason everyone in school thought he was real tough sheet. When he challenged me to a fight and I accepted, everyone thought I didn't have a chance. He hit me in the jaw a couple of times, but I barely noticed, the kid could barely throw a punch. I grabbed him by the shirt collar, ran him headfirst into a brick wall a couple of times, threw him on the ground, and started kicking him in the ribs, until a teacher pulled him off of me. By the end I had left the kid in tears in front of most of my other bullies. I got a week of in-school suspension, and chewed out by the principal, a couple of the assistant principals, a few of my teachers and my mom, but not my dad, but it was worth it. It put a stop to my bullying, but that actually wasn't the most satisfying part. The most satisfying part was seeing the shock, anger, and resentment of my classmates when they saw me so ruthlessly beat the sheet out of someone they thought was one of the toughest kids in the school. Some of them tried to claim that I didn't actually win the fight, they tried to invent some stupid rule about how the winner of the fight was whoever used the coolest move, which they all agreed was when the other kid started by a percutting me, and some tried to play me up as a dangerous psycho, but it never caught on. The message that came through instead was that I was not someone to be faked with. Some backstory, I've always been extremely shy and non-confrontational, I always avoid conflict when I can. Although I also tend to have a big mouth, I don't speak much, but when I do, it's either something logical and well thought out, or it's literally the worst possible thing I could say at that moment. This kid, let's call him Caesar, like the ape, was easily twice my size and significantly stronger physically than me, he was really popular and well liked. But a total dick. So we're in gym class playing floor hockey, and as usual I wasn't really doing much cause I faking hated gym. He comes up to me out of the blue and towers over me, and goes on yelling at me for 5 minutes telling me that I'm worthless, and shouldn't even exist, and that should just go sit down with the girl, who was sitting out sick, because I don't deserve to be playing with him. And he spent 5 minutes grinding into me, and by the end I genuinely felt worthless, but I knew he was just pure scum, so I tried to brush it off. Later in the locker room he was talking about me to his friends and whatnot, when I came out I opened my idiot mouth ranting about how much of a dick he is, right in front of his friends. So he comes out, and walks right up to me, and shoves me, and here's our dialogue, had you called me an asshole yay, I did. Cause you are say it to my face I just did. 
you're an asshole. What the fuck are you gonna do about it nothing yay that's right go to hell what? Shut your mouth and watch your back kid. It'll rip that long hair of yours right off fuck you. Good luck with that gym teacher finally came over and separated us after watching intently for 3 minutes. So I heard later that he was planning on beating the sheet out of me the next day when I came to gym, so naturally. I went to the disciplinarian and told him everything and Caesar never said a single word to me ever again. People tell me I'm a coward, yay, I am. But I didn't end up in the hospital and he never spoke to me again. On all accounts, I won. May have been a shitty way of doing it, but I really don't care about my reputation if it means I'm alive and well. No regrets at all. I wasn't bullied, but I did fuck with the school bully quite a bit. Sophomore year of high school I'm sitting there in drafting class and the school bully is sitting next to me. There's a freshman in the class and the bully is faking with him saying he's going to steal his Walkman. For you youngsters, a Walkman is like an iPod, but about 300 times larger and less practical. So the kid gets up to sharpen his pencil, and I grab his Walkman, take it up high over my head and slam it down to the tile floor. Everyone turns around, and I'm standing up looking shocked, like I'm reacting to the bully, and say Jesus Christ Jason. The freshman of course starts crying to the teacher that Jason had just threatened to steal the Walkman. Bully Jason gets called to the office and tells his side. I get called into the office and act incredulous and shocked at Jason's accusation. The sophomore administrator says in an accusatory tone Jason, it would just be better if you admitted what you did because what you don't know is that we have cameras in the classroom and already know exactly what happened. At this time we know he's bullshitting us because he and I are the only ones who know I'm the one who destroyed the poor bastard's Walkman. The administrator walks out to give him a minute to think and I use this time to silently mouth I'm going to kill you Jason and start drooling a line of spit from my mouth. A couple months later I see that idiot Jason keeps his locker combination written on the inside of the cover of his history book. So I'm sitting in biology lab and there's a digital scale in the back of class. I stash it in my backpack and later on slip the scale into his locker. I don't expect anything to come of this and I'm just tickled by the absurdity of him opening his locker and a bigger's digital scale falling out. But that's not what happens. Idiot Jason doesn't ever go to his locker so he never finds it. But within the week, the biology teacher reports the scale is stolen to the principal who then orders a locker check for every single locker. They find the scale in his locker and it's already common knowledge that Jason sells weed, so they assume he stole it to weigh his product. The police come to school and interview him. Eventually they drop it, and he only gets suspended. When he came back to school I said you should thank me for your vacation Jason, and starting drooling again. TLDR framed the school bully for two separate incidents, and then convinced him I was insane. Edit, the most common response I'm getting for this is a, hey man, it sounds like you're the bully. If that's how you feel then fine, but Jason beat the sheet out of smaller, kids all through middle school, was accused of sexual assault by his freshman year of high school, and perpetually demeaned and or physically threatened the nerdy kids or anyone he could single out for being different. So fuck Jason and fuck you. From 6th to 8th grade, there was a group of guys who bullied me constantly. I was in the very height of my awkward face skinny flat chested, heavy orthodontic work, constantly reading, very few friends, no clothes that fit, skin condition and terrible lisp, made worse by the braces. In short, I was open season for any and all bullies. But there was one kid. Let's call him A. A was not the biggest bully in the grade, that title going to his friends R and N, but he was the most prolific. Every time I walked into homeroom, he would look at me and make vomiting noises. If I answered a question wrong in class, he'd snicker. Nothing physical, but it was a level of psychological bullying that caused me to nearly transfer schools halfway through 7th grade. Middle of 8th grade, he upped the ante. Seeing as all the other girls in the grade but me were starting to get dates to dances, he and his friends started asking me out to make fun of me. I'd never been asked out before by anyone, so this was a special form of torment. Every day was the same. There'd be a chorus of laughs from their lunch table, one of them would approach me and pester me to go out with him until they got a big reaction. 
For the first few days, it'd be about 10 minutes of them pestering and mocking until I started tearing up, at which point they'd walk back triumphantly. Next few days, it'd be 5 minutes before I'd pull out a book or otherwise ignore them, and they'd call me a beach and walk back to beach about me not reacting. Finally, the last time, this kid walked up to me and asked me to go to the dance with him. Could barely get out his words through his laughter. I decided I'd had enough. I literally swept the kid aside with my arm, stormed over to the table, and walked directly up to A maintaining eye contact, something I never did, at least to him, as it made me feel too vulnerable, and shouted as loud as I could, stay the fuck away from me, you colossal piece of shit. At that point, er and I came to the same realization at the same time, girls start growing before boys. Scrawny as I was, I still had 6 inches and roughly 20 pounds on him, and was about at the level of done, that I would not hesitate to beat the sheet out of him and only him, considering I had ignored the rest of the boys who had asked me out. The table was silent. I squeaked out a small, oh okay. I turned to leave, then remembered another thing he'd done that was pissing me off, and stop friending me on Facebook, beach. He never spoke to me again. And, in the 6 years since middle school, he has not attempted to friend me on Facebook. I consider this a win. I was at work sitting at my desk and the bully, a full head and shoulders taller than me, decided to spray me with a chemical. It got on my arm. A split second later I punched him in the balls in the stomach. We were both reprimanded. He quit the next day. Never before had I lost it like that. I actually felt bad for losing my temper took a while for me to realize that it was the right thing to do. Years later I was the new guy at another job. I shared an office with another bully. I patiently warned him that I didn't like workplace nonsense and that touching me was off limits. He just didn't get it after repeated warnings. I know now that violence in the workplace should be avoided when possible, and I was really worried that I'd lose it again. So one day I had resolved to speak to our supervisor and request a new office. Before I had an opportunity to talk to the supervisor, the bully decided to throw a football at me while I wasn't looking. I blew up on him in front of another employee. Two days later the bully was mysteriously let go. I'm glad I didn't resort to violence that time. I'm a pretty small guy, so it wouldn't have ended well for me. TLDR, workplace bullying sucks. If you see someone being bullied then lend them a hand. Backstory, me, and, let's call him Jim, have been best friends since I moved to a new city. He was also my first friend in the new city. First year was great we were friends and our parents grew to be friends, and we got pretty close. I don't exactly remember what the details were of the situation starting, but I do know that he would get a little rowdy oftentimes and we would constantly argue and bicker. Well things really escalated as he would call me names and start harassing me at school. There was even an incident where we were in the same city baseball league. He was threatening to hit me with a baseball since he was a pitcher. One day, after several hours of ridicule and taunting, I was getting a drink of water when suddenly he came up behind me and shoved my face straight into the water fountain. Now I'm a pretty passive person, but I was not having it with physical bullying, so I turn around and proceed to beat the living sheet out of him. Didn't get bullied anymore and definitely didn't talk anymore. I got suspended because I was the aggressor in the situation. He didn't get in trouble fuck you, Jim. My dad works with the police department. One time this group of boys just wouldn't stop harassing me. I was ginger haired and kind of plump when I was younger, so a big target for kids at school. My dad had a bit of a drinking problem. We didn't get along very well, and my parents were divorced by the time I was really young. I'd only see my dad a couple of times a month. We weren't close. I was much closer to my stepdad. He was a more patient sort of parent, and he was always there for me. One day at school this group of boys took a pair of shoes from me that my dad bought. They destroyed them and made me walk around for the rest of the day in my socks. My dad picked me up from school and he noticed I didn't have the shoes he bought for me. He was furious. I've never seen him so angry. He demanded I tell him who took my shoes. I was reluctant to tell him because he was scaring me, but I finally caved. I'm not really sure what happened. The next Monday at school this boy seemed really rattled. 
I could just see fear in his eyes whenever he saw me. He wouldn't look me in the eyes and would actually walk away from me when I came near him. I have a feeling my dad did something to this kid, but I never figured out what it was. TLDR. Don't mess with a policeman's son. In high school I wasn't the cool kid. I hung out with some because I played football and baseball, but I also hung out with the weird animal magic card playing kids who smelled like musty basement. I was friends with anyone because well, I like talking to people and have a lot of nerdy tendencies. Enter two brothers and their crony, all as holes, who did nothing but pick on my group of neighborhood friends who were all athletes, but not upper echelon kind of cool. We just did our own goofy ashalish teenage things. For some reason they loved to mess with us, until the day. Imagine the godfather, when Michael takes out the five families, that was about how it went down. In the morning, the youngest brother and his whole friend were picking on a smaller kid on the bus. I asked them to stop, and the brother her reached for my throat. Game over. I smashed his head into the bus window which cracked, and then got on top of him, and splattered his nose all over his face. His best friend pulled me off of him. We go to the principal's office, and receive our punishment, and then go to class. In class, the older brother confronts me, and says I'm faking dead, and I'll be waiting at the bus stop. Okay, cool. During the day, we plot to end it once and for all. I call my dad who picks us all up, because I was already kicked off the bus. He takes us home, and we hop on our bikes and split up at two different bus stops where the older brother and friend would be getting off. The friend gets off, and two of my friends come out from behind the house, and beat the living hell out of him. A few minutes later the older brother gets off the bus and two of my friends and myself catch him and again, beat him pretty good. The younger brother sees it from his house and runs outside. He gets his ass kicked a second time, that day and my friends and I go home. For the last year of middle school, and four years of high school, we never had an issue with them. The younger brother and friend actually became somewhat friendly with us once we got out of college. The older brother wrapped his girlfriend and is in prison, so he was slashes in his hole to this day. A little late but here goes. My senior year of high school I was a varsity defensive lineman at a USA Today top 10 program. However, I hung out with a group of average Joes. A group of people who didn't identify super well with their after school peers. Example, band nerds who didn't act like stereotypical band nerds. Well our group had this other similar group that just hated us. We typically kept to ourselves and didn't drink. They played pranks on people and were the ones who would cheat on the floor in the bathroom cause they thought it was funny. Well each member golf their group was a member of our group we stopped association with due to their crazy nature. Well I was the one who they typically made fun of and picked at when they wanted to start stuff, but I never broke. During the last week of school they managed to convince an underclassman to throw mustard covered hot dogs at my group, hitting some of my closest friends, which broke my fortitude. I stood up in lunch and egged their whole group to follow me to the courtyard. I was considerably bigger than most of them. I then singled this kid out and asked him guess it makes you feel like a real man to throw food at people. I knew I had one by the look in his eyes. He was ready to fight. I started to back away, slowly walking toward the front office doors connected to the courtyard. I kept asking him the same question, knowing it was working. Then I got to the door and this kid tells me yay well I wrapped your mom and starts in on my mother. I just asked him wrapping people must make you feel like a real man. Then I opened the door, and he follows me in, still talking shit about my mom. My trap card is activated, cause he doesn't know, but my mother is the front desk secretary. The sore officer starts over at us, I remain calm, he doesn't see him. I have him walk right in front of my mother, who hears him talking shit. Then I say well, if you're such a man, say it to her face buddy. The idiot looks at my mother, and says I wrapped you last night and now I'm going to murder you. Then the SRO officer spears this kid into the desk, maces him and arrest him. He cries, and cries, he throws a temper tantrum, he breaks. Meanwhile every principal in the school is rounding up all of his friends. My mom is laughing hysterical at this kid, and give me the most bomb high five ever. Every one of the kids who put the guy up to this, didn't get to walk. Three lost full rides to college, and the kid himself was officially charged and plead guilty. 
The kid's mom tried to sue me, I showed her the video a friend had on his phone, and she offered to pay us not to post it on the internet. It felt amazing. I completely manipulated this kid trying to bully me and my friends into ruining his young life, while simultaneously getting the biggest group of dicks in school kicked out of graduation and ostracized by the whole school. I managed to keep my calm and play everything perfectly. I felt like a boss. I could have fought him I guess, but I would have gotten in trouble. So getting watch a kid cry like a baby without ever laying my hands on him and having a school official do something for me that would have ruined my last week of school, kicked as. In 8th grade, there was this guy in my gym class who must have been left back for at least 2 years. I was a pretty big kid for my age, but he was, was still like 4 or 5 inches taller than me, built like a linebacker, and dumb as a post. He physically bullied everyone, because no one was even close to his size. He liked to walk around the locker room after class and punch everyone in the upper arm really hard, and everyone just took it, because no one wanted to deal with the fallout from standing up to him. One day I just snapped and did the unthinkable and punched him in his arm. After he punched me, I hit him as hard as I could, but it was like hitting a wall. For a moment he just looked at me like he couldn't believe I had done that and it started to dawn on me that I really didn't have a follow up plan, so I stared him down and did my best to look confident. Then he threw a jab at my face that was so fast I was seeing stars before I had time to realize what was happening. There was blood everywhere and it was a minor miracle my nose wasn't broken. Everything after that is kind of a blur, but I didn't get in any trouble for fighting. This was 25 years ago, though he was suspended for a few days. I felt like such a loser, I couldn't tell if the way people were looking at me was because they respected me for standing up to him, or pity for getting Myers kicked, so I assumed it was pity. When he came back from his suspension, he started right back up with the arm punching in the locker room. But as he went down the line he would look at me and then just move on to the next kid. I didn't get punched in the arm for the rest of the year. When I was 16, my sister left for college and I thought she would never be able to bully me again. Then a year later she moved back into the bedroom we used to share. Something clicked inside me and I was done with her sheet. I was tired of not listening to music because she would make fun of it. Tired of only buying clothes like hers so she wouldn't laugh at me. Tired of her telling, made up stories to the friends we shared in band, or abandoning me when she was my ride to school functions, etc. So I called her on every beachy thing she said to anyone, told her when her behavior wasn't acceptable, etc. Her boyfriend sometimes backed me up even. I learned what she was most self-conscious or insecure about and exploited it. It turned me into a mean person for a while, but she was afraid of me instead of bullying me for the first time in my life. It felt so good. Never again would an adult tell me to just ignore her. Then one day, after she was trying to throw a fit, I just looked at her and said, move out, and she called her boyfriend, and he brought a pickup truck and they packed and left. My mom was upset, but it was so nice to live in a peaceful house. My little brother and father both later thanked me. Now we just ignore each other at family functions. We have a big extended family, so it's not hard. I was getting poked and prodded by the same guy all through elementary school up until 8th grade, when I had enough. He would go out of his way to make school suck extra balls. It got so bad that some days I'd fake an illness so not to see him in school. The kid did all kinds of shit, would trip me in the halls if he saw I was sitting down to eat. He'd sit next to me and either burp in my face the entire time or stick his fingers in my food. Let me tell you, school sucked. Well, my mom was very active in my school stuff. She always had to be in the loop. She was a helicopter mom, I guess that's what they call it. But I wouldn't tell her because, well, I didn't want her going to the school and making it possibly worse for me. So I tried to tough it out. Fast forward to 8th grade. One day during early morning spill out, the bully comes up out of nowhere and just starts to go off about how he'd been in the office the other day and saw my mom. Then, he starts on about how I was a mama's boy, how she had to check in on me, etc. It's at this point I'm not feeling the normal here comes the bullying feeling. I start to feel hot inside. Like, my stomach was burning up. 
the kid keeps going on about my mom, saying she wiped my ass for me, just, all kinds of shit. Then, he said the phrase, that made me snap. My mother and father divorced when I was young so, it kind of messed with me. But, he decided to bring that up, that's why your mom ain't with your pops. She can't hold on to dick. Yup, I snapped. I had an out of body experience. I saw myself bear hugging this kid, and, with all my strength slamming him on the concrete. And, I didn't do it once. I picked him up, slammed him again, and, did it a few times. The last time I grabbed him, I belly to back slammed him. After I got my footing, and hauled us away, because I wasn't looking to get suspended, a friend of mine found me, and told me, that the last slam I gave this kid had him shaking his entire body. Like full on convulsions. And, since then, I wasn't bullied. Ever. There's two. Both were in middle school, two different bullies. When I was in 7th grade, there was this one annoying guy that would pick on me verbally, mainly because I didn't do anything to stand up for myself. Eventually, we are getting ready to go the locker room after PE, and he keeps saying stop touching my booty to me, and my initial instincts were to just ignore it. Eventually, he turns to me and yells why are you touching my booty? For everybody to hear. At that point, I had enough, so I yelled I'm not touching you, and gave him a violent shove that everybody in front of us felt. Keep in mind, we were maybe 19th and 20th in line and everybody in front went forward a little bit after I shoved him. After that, he left me alone. The following year, we were in band class together and actually became friends. The second was a guy who was a dick to me in 7th and 8th grade. However, I didn't do anything to him that made him leave me alone. However, I need to give some context to the story to seem like less of a bastard than the one I was. The backstory, in 8th grade, my mom had cancer and I wasn't close with my dad at that time, so my grades were slipping, I was a lot more irritable, and overall, I would snap at random moments. But there was this one kid in my band class who nobody liked, since he didn't know his instrument and was annoying. One day, I got so annoyed that I hit him with a drum mallet. I got a 3 day suspension, but in order to get my assignments, I had to stay for the rest of the day. That day was when random people would walk up to me and ask if it was true that I hit that guy. The bully was in my PE class, and when he heard that I did it, he gave me a high five and left me alone after that. This will get buried, but here goes in middle school, I had a pretty large group of girlfriends who were all wealthier and cuter than I was, puberty did horrible things to me. The ringleader of the group, whose dad was a local preacher, was such a bully to anyone she didn't like, and frequently would make other girls, not in our clique cry on a daily basis. One day, a friend of mine, that wasn't in our clique became the target, and I spoke up, which passed the target onto me. I was shunned from the group. I didn't think it'd be too big of a deal, until my mom started getting calls from block numbers and links sent to her leading to a MySpace page titled We Hate. The ringleader girl had started it, had everyone in the clique join it, and they were posting my home address, email, and screen names, phone numbers, and my parents and siblings info, and encouraging everyone and anyone to harass me. My mother printed out the entire thing and took it to the school, and they shrugged it off as girls can be catty, no big deal. At this point I was terrified to go anywhere, because they would harass me at school, call me at home, message me your name, everything. I felt like I couldn't escape it. After about a month of it, I was a shell of the preteen I was. I didn't talk to anyone, I'd lost most of my friends, and I stopped being vocal. The ringleader and her posse walked up to me in the hall one day, called me a dumb beach, and pushed me into the lockers beside us, and I snapped. I punched her so hard in the face that I shattered her cheekbone. Might not be correct. It was a long time ago, but I faked her up. She ran to the office crying. They pulled me in and called my mom. When they tried to get me suspended my mom threatened to sue them for not stepping in earlier. I was never bothered again. TLDR. Girl wouldn't stop making fun of me. I snapped and punched her so hard I broke her face. So in middle school one of my bullies walked up and hit me in the face a couple times. After the second round of walk up and punch I asked her why she enjoyed hitting me. 
She explained that I was an only child, lived in a house, was white, and was pretty. She was black, lived in an apartment with seven older brothers, and didn't think she was pretty, she was very pretty. She just didn't look European. It just wasn't fair that I got everything. I said how. Huh. Then I explained that I was an only child because all of my siblings had died twice. I was a middle child, they died, another was born, and she died. Yes, I lived in a house, but two years before that my family had been homeless. Being black wasn't a bad thing, and she was pretty. Besides, being pretty had only gotten me assaulted. Then I asked her to trade, because living in an apartment with seven living siblings sounded freaking awesome. She decided her life was pretty great after that conversation. Something about not assuming everyone else has perfect lives. I think she also needed to hear that she could be pretty without being white. Personally I was just annoyed that someone hit me a few times and then decided my life sucked too much to be jealous of. Couldn't she have started with an insult or something instead of smacking me across the face? My story is a bit violent. Back in third grade, there was a kid, let's call him Dan, who was held back a grade and was bigger and older than everyone else in class. He was an own bully, picking on everyone in class during recess, taking their balls when they were playing kickball, pushing them around, even intimidating kids to give him their lunch money. To be honest, when I first noticed him doing these things I was scared. No one was going to fight back against him because he was bigger and older than us. And no one was going to tell the teacher because they didn't want to be known as a tattletale. So I avoided him as much as I could. About two months into the year however, he eventually came around to me. When we were standing in line waiting to get lunch, he pushed me back against the wall, we were in single file line, and he was right behind me, and asked me to give him my lunch money or he would beat me up, I was terrified, so I said fine, and gave it to him. I had never been bullied like that like that before, I had only ever experienced harmless teasing until then, I had never been threatened physically like that before, and I felt embarrassed and weak, I didn't know the word at the time, but what I felt was emasculation. The night when I went back home I stood over it, I got angrier and angrier at what happened, and I came up with a plan. The next day, at recess Dan was playing hide and seek in a play, set beneath a slide, where teachers couldn't really see us. I had taken a jump rope a few minutes earlier and snuck up behind him. I quickly put the jump rope over his head and pulled as hard as I could. I remember his hands flailing around as he tried to pull the rope off him. He slowly got weak and dropped the rope, pinned him to the ground and punched him in the throat and face while he was still catching his breath. I told him I would kill him if he ever took my lunch money again. He started crying and told me he wouldn't. I got up, and I saw one of my classmates looking at me with horror, if you tell I'll beat you up too, I said, and he just ran away without a word. Thankfully, the teachers never found out. TD, LR, choked my bully out with a jump rope. So I'm really not ashamed about what I did when I was in secondary school, UK. As all stories go, there was a girl I liked in the same year as me, let's call her Sarah. Problem was is that she wasn't popular and wasn't well known by the kids that were popular. She was known to be quiet and introverted. The school I went to was bad, not a nice place to be at the time, so she made enemies simply for being different. She was a target. I was 16, so was she. We spoke a lot and got on well because I was one of the only people to not hate on her. So there is this group of girls. Three of them, let's call them Stacy, Amy, Rosie. These girls were semi-popular, knew a lot of people, did a lot of dumb shit together. One such thing was their favorite pastime, hating on the girl I liked. One day I got to experience the hatred firsthand, faking beach. Emo cunt. Kill yourself beach. These were just a small handful of the awful names spewed at her on a daily basis. I was hanging out with her one day when the three girls approached us, not a good sign. They began to belittle her, saying she wasn't worth anything. Then they turned to me. Stussy. Hey mechanic. Why do you hang out with a sludged? Me. Because she isn't you faking terrible comeback I know. Stussy. What does that even mean you idiot? I stood up me. It means that I'd rather hang out with a sludged than be anywhere near you. Simple as that. Now. Back the fuck off. Before you piss me off. 
What I hadn't realized is that this band of merry fact nuts had planned to attack Sarah today, and whilst Stacy spoke to me, I heard a thud. I turned and saw Sarah getting pummeled by the other two. A crowd was drawing. What do I do? Fuck it. I full on rugby tackled one of the girls to the floor. As she squealed I got up and shoved the other one off Sarah. I helped her off the ground and made her stay behind me, away from the girls. They gathered in front of me. One of the girls, can't remember who, punched me in the face. That pissed me off. This is the part that I'm conflicted in. Gender equality has been a massive thing for years, so was I right when I retaliated. I swung back, a clear right huck on the jaw, knocked the beach flying, a new came from the now huge crowd and the other two girls lunged at me. I headbutted the first flying as whole and she cried out in pain, clutching her head and moving off to the left, and when the second girl ran at me, I did one of these kicks at around chest level, stopped her in her tracks and she crumbled. They backed off, and I turned, and hugged Sarah, and escorted her away, people moved out my way and I never heard anything from the girls again. These girls were not combat efficient, neither was I, but I did what I thought was powerful, and would stop the threat. This issue. I'm a guy, people seems to look down on guys hitting girls back, but isn't it fair? I would never hit a girl for no reason, same I wouldn't hit a guy for no reason. But when you are in the moment, and you have a choice of stand back, and let what is happening happen, or help your loved ones and fight these crazy beaches off, I will always choose the latter. TLDR, crazy beaches attack girl I liked. I knocked one girl out, headbutted another and kicked the third. No regrets. Not me, but a friend. Back in high school, there was this asshole that would pick on slash try to start fights with everyone, and liked to particularly mess with my friend. This guy was the typical stacked quarterback of the sophomore football team, so no one stood up to him. My friend took this guy's harassment with a grain of salt, and didn't let it bother him. But then. My friend's outlook started to get more, and more brighter throughout the next month of school, while the asshole bully got more and more angsty. Then one day, it stopped. The jock wasn't bullying him anymore. He would still bully others, but not my friend. Coming to find out, the jock's mom married my friend's dad. It was some sheet out of a movie. That's why the jock was getting more and more excited each day. He knew he was going to have a 24 hour punching bag. The jock and his mom move into my friend's house and almost immediately felt regret. My friend was a tough guy out of our group and was always playfully aggressive towards the rest of the us. On the first night after moving in, my friend beat down the jock in the hallway at night and assured that there would be many more of those beatings. Basically, my friend started to fight back against the jock within their own home until the roles were reversed. I didn't believe him until at lunch he said oh, yeah, watch this. He walks over to the jock eating with his clique and squeezes his hand on his shoulder like hey, Paul. The jock looks immediately terrified. I'm feeling pretty hungry, you should really get me a sandwich. Our school occasionally sold chic filler sandwiches, my friend tells the jock in a monotone voice. The jock says yes, sir and rushes to get one. Our group of friends go over to his house a week later and watch our friend greet his jock stepbrother by putting him in a headlock and quoting grandma's kisses. Fuck popsicles, you little beach. The jock hurriedly gets what he was getting out of the pantry and runs to his room. No one ever got on our friend's bad side after that. TLDR, revenge of the nerds, except a lot more faked up. 9th grade, new private high school, no friends there second hour we had biology with Dr. Sarglowski. The guy sitting behind me had a bad habit of putting his feet on the rack below my chair. This wouldn't normally be a big deal, but he would tap his feet and not only shake my chair, but frequently his feet would be rubbing all over my ass. Two weeks, that's what I gave him. Two weeks of asking politely for him to stop it before I'd had enough. One day. Feet firmly pressed into my back I took my bible, catholic hs, and swung it, spine down, directly onto his shin with a resonating thud. I then asked, loud enough for the whole class, to stop what they were doing, and look at me, excuse me, but do you have a problem with touching my ass? The room went silent. Except for the teacher, who just said Mr. Isabane, please stay after class to speak with me. Now, I knew I was in for it. 
Not only had I struck another student, but I used a curse word, very loudly, in the middle of class. Dr. C pulls me into his office after class, Isobane, what was that? I explained what had been happening including the repeated attempts to get him to stop, and said that I'd finally had enough. He paused for a brief moment before saying, you did the right thing. Now get out of here, before you're late for your next class. I was stunned. Here I was, 14 years old, thinking I was going to get detention, suspension, or maybe even worse. Not only did I not get into any trouble, after class kids were coming up to me and patting me on the back and telling me how awesome it was. Now he may not have been a bully by the common definition of the word, but he got what he deserved and I never, not once, got bullied the rest of my four years there. I was in 11th grade, sitting in English class, before it had quite begun. My bully came in, 5 minutes and 10 seconds, probably about 275 pounds, took a seat across the room from me, and immediately started picking on me. Having come out to her the year prior, she was my best friend at the time, she had an arsenal full of jokes and insults that only bothered me because she used to be my buddy. Class began and she kept throwing out little one-liners he re and there while we were doing some group activity. It being the last class of the day and I don't know what else, I had finally had enough. She came off with some lame comment and in retort, I fired back, Kelsey, you stopped being funny a hundred pounds ago. She shut up fack, the whole class shut up, then started in with oh sheet and oh my god, and then laughter. I embarrassed her so badly she didn't speak to me again for quite a long while. I knew that the reason she was such a bully was because she was so big, and her insecurities made her that way, blah blah. Same old story. Ten years later, and we are best friends. She's given me plenty of tear-filled apologies as to how she treated me in high school and has a lot of remorse for the way she used to me. After years of dealing with his bullshit, rando high school dick finds me in downtown bar. I've never been violent and let smaller guys push me around knowing it's to mask insecurities, etc. I'm 6 feet 2 inches and 285, mostly muscle. Anyways, I'm having a bad day, hence the bar. Dude walks up and slaps the back of my head, saying the usual bravado bull. I didn't even look at him, just said to walk away while he can. He grabs my beer, finishes it and swipes it across my face, more specifically my left eye which he got. Blood everywhere. As he jabbed the broken end into my eye to fat my sheet up royally, I grabbed his hand with the bottle, realizing no matter how hard he tried to move that hand closer or away, it wasn't moving. I smiled at him, said calmly. This is where your life changes forever. Stood up, one hand on his, the other on his neck, picked him up, smashed him into the bar, let him stand up. He makes fists, like he's ready to go. Again with a smile, I chuckled as I told him he's not going to be leaving on his own feet. He throws a haymaker right, easy out of the way, clocked him right in the left eye, dropped like a ton of bricks out cold. After that rage snap, I don't remember much. Apparently a good 10 minutes of breaking this unconscious guy's body. What I do know? I had glass removed from my left eye, a chicks to get kind of scar. Him. Fractured orbital bone, concussion with post-concussion syndrome, two broken ankles, five broken ribs, a punctured lung and seizures from brain damage. Never bothered me after that. I also cleaned up the mess at the bar, offered to pay for the damage. But they said your eyes almost hanging out of your fucking head. Sit down until the paramedics get here good times. Was charged with assault. Later dropped from GGG bar patrons siding with me. Apparently dude was a super mega douche that everyone hated in town. I apparently was the community's response back 4 years of physical threats. Physical harm and stupid drunk behavior. P.S. I sent him flowers in the hospital. Mine was in 8th grade. My father worked for Union Pacific, and he bought me a pair of steel-toed work boots from the company their employees ordered from. I thought they were neat. I was not, still am not, a guy who gets into fights. A kid in my class would decide who in the room was unlikely to fight back. His daily routine, we all typically arrived 10 minutes before the teacher did, was to take a new piece of chalk from the box, wipe it sideways all over the blackboard, erase the huge mess, then go around and clean the eraser on the desks and clothing of his victims. 
eventually, I became one of them. After a few days of this, when he came over and started patting my shirt with the eraser, I swung my fist straight out and punched him in the chest. He took a few steps back, then walked away. Left me alone for about a week before he did it again. This time, I just sort of snapped and kicked him in the nuts. I was wearing my boots, and, as far as I remember, I wasn't doing it because I had steel-toed boots. I don't think I even remembered I had them on. I was just sick of his sheet. This time, he staggered back, grabbed his crotch, and made a sort of strained, high-pitched croak, and fell on his ass. The teacher finally believed us. He'd claim we made the chalky messes ourselves, and he got in some minor trouble. Also, I suppose it's kind of a bully story, my bus driver in high school was a woman in her 50s with an attitude problem. Despite many requests not to do so, when I wasn't in front of the house at the bus, stop at 7am, she'd lay on the horn. She'd snap at anyone who got on late. The route crossed our R tracks with a stoplight just past them, and rather than waiting behind the painted line, she'd pull onto the tracks to wait. The last straw for me was, we had a couple of students, Ethiopian, I think, who'd chat, quietly, think indoor voice in their language, and she'd frequently tell them to shut up. One day she said loudly, when you come to America, you speak English and nothing but English. If you want to jabber your own language, go back to your own country and jabber there. I brought that, and all my other complaints, from general angry beachy attitude to stopping on the tracks, my parents jaws hit the floor at that one, home, and they made a formal complaint. I don't know if other complained, then or before, but she was fired. The replacement driver wasn't friendly peresi, but she didn't treat us like crap, beach, or lay on the horn at 7am in a neighborhood, and she always stopped before the tracks at a red light. During my English exam in high school, we were all sat in the large assembly hall that had singular desks throughout, about 10 rows of desks with at least 30 per row, and who ends up sitting right behind me the whole of the century. Okay so first a little backstory on this particular bully, he never really bothered me, but he bothered my friends quite a lot for instance grabbing their lunch and throwing it in the bin, pushing them around any chance he got, or would mess with their class notes whenever he saw fit. So before the test starts we had 10 minutes or so, just to relax and catch our thoughts, or ask the examiners as questions we wanted. Mr. Asshole behind me thought it would be funny to keep kicking the back of my chair through the opening straight hitting my lower back with every kick. At first I calmly turned round asked him to stop kicking. 5 minutes go by, and I call the examiner, and ask this guy behind me keeps kicking the back of my chair move me seats, tell him to calm down, or I'm jumping over this seat. So the examiner told him to stop acting around. Everything was going well 30 minutes into my exam, until he started the kicking again. I turned around and just gave him a death glare which he laughed at. 10 minutes later the kicking has turned into constant kicking with the occasional slap to the back of my head. I stopped doing my work for 5 minutes trying to calm down. That's when he stabbed me in the back of the neck with his pen as I was laying back trying to relax. So I did what I thought was best I jumped over my chair and his desk straight on top of him and started swinging. Got removed from the exam and had to retake the test two weeks later on my own. I didn't really get into trouble as I was known by the teachers as being a joyful guy that doesn't bother anyone and everyone knew Mr. As whole as that guy that was in seeing the principal every day that is just a bad apple. TLDR. Guy messed with me during exam. So I jumped the table and beat the sheet out of him. Fuck, I'm late to this thread, but maybe it'll get seen. TLDR I stabbed the faker. There was this jock who was so much of an asshole that he didn't even fit in with the jocks. He was really disliked by everyone. He bullied my friend for a whole year. At that time in high school, my friend fit in with the emo stereotype. He had black skinny jeans, dyed hair, etc. Bully would harass him for being gay daily for a year, asked him if he cut himself, wanted to kill himself, etc. When the next year came around, I just think they happened to not see any more thanks to scheduling. Then he tried starting with me. I was in gym class, and we were in the bleachers studying for the final exam. I kept getting sheets thrown at me, but I couldn't figure out who it was coming from. Then I kept getting slapped in the back of the head, or poked or more sheets thrown at me again and again. 
I turned around and started swearing at all those behind me just losing my faking mind, still unsure of who it was. It still went on, but I finally figured out that it was the previously mentioned bully. I took a solid pen not a click type, uncapped it, held it over my left hip, and swung it all the way around my right side, and stabbed him dead in the ribcage with full momentum. He lost his sheet. Then Clark let out. He got up, walked down and said he was going to kick my ass. I told him to do it right here right now, and he walked the fuck off. He later came to me on Facebook and threatened me, and I got a bunch of my larger friends to tell him that they'd fuck him up if he comes after me. Didn't hear sheet from him anymore. After being bullied throughout elementary school, I learned to be a kid that wasn't about to get faked with. I have two of these. The first was when I was in primary school, which is the British equivalent of secondary school. There was this kid who was autistic, but he knew it and used it to his advantage. He was one of the biggest assholes ever and was constantly mean to me, even making fun of my dead hamster and stuff. But whenever I tried to tell a teacher about it, they were just like well he doesn't really know any better, but he totally did. He'd play the innocent card every goddamn time. As you may imagine this was one of the most annoying things ever. So one day, and I was about 8 at this point, as he was doing his daily picking on me, I decided I'd finally had enough, and I pushed him against a wall, hit him right in his stupid face, and said something about his dad who had died a few years ago. Now this sounds really mean, and maybe I did go too far, but it made him stop being mean to me. Maybe he realized that it's not nice to make jokes about dead people or hamsters, so I think it was for the best. Oh and I got sent to the head teacher and we had a long chat and I cried and stuff and he finally believed me about all this mean stuff this autistic kid said to me. The second time was in secondary school, essentially British high school. There was this typical popular guy who everyone loved and I was just some weird kid who always played Metroid. Once he took my GBA off me and crushed it beneath a chair. The teachers were just like well you're not supposed to bring gamma boys to school. Anyway this guy was, like most bullies, not without his own problems. His mum died recently and he also had problems with his heart. Then one day he walked past me with a big group of his friends and started laughing at my long messy hair or something. Yeah I know that's kind of an off thing for a guy to make fun of. But whatever and for whatever reason this made me snap, and I just grabbed him, and threw him on the floor. I kicked him a few times and all his friends started laughing. Then I said I hope your faking heart gives out you heartless sheet. So I realize this all makes me look like a bit of an asshole. I beat up an autistic kid and someone else with a whole slew of problems, but the way I see it, there's no excuse for being so mean to someone else. I don't care if you've got your own issues, don't make everyone else's lives hell. The second guy once turned the lights off in the changing rooms and organized everyone to push me over in the dark and kick me, so although these people were probably only so mean because they had it rough, I still don't think that's any excuse to be that mean to anyone else. This kind of turned into a little rant about bullying but oh well. Hopefully this doesn't make me look like too much of an awful person. Grew up in a psycho neighborhood where you had to take care of yourself to some extent or die, at least that's how I felt. Problem was I was a very small slate kid with no height, who was cursed with a blackout temper. I was the oldest of a large family of mostly girls and felt the onus of protecting everyone but I was nearly a legal midget and didn't grow to be 6 feet 2 inches until my senior year. I was a 9th grader and the senior guys in gym would pick a kid every day to knock down and drag all around the gym. Your gym clothes would look like you were part-timing as a chimney sweet. I tried to keep an eye on them, but one day I was distracted, and it happened to me. I was humiliated as they formed a circle laughing and saying that my mom was lazy for sending me to school with my uniform so dirty. The ringleader soon forgot and went to the showers. I sneaked down to the showers and pulled the fashionable skinny belt from his pants in the locker and jumped into the showers and proceeded to give him a whipping like Zorro with his own belt. His screams were delicious. Anyway to shorten the story he told his older brother who was also a senior who then met me outside of school and demolished me. I knew that this could start a round of bullying by others and thought that it might even lead to something happening to my sisters if others knew I couldn't defend them. 
I decided that my only course of action was to become this kid's personal demon. Monday morning I was walking in the halls to class when I saw him and his friends enter the hall from the other end. I yelled his name and charged down the hall and just started swinging. The result. He kicked my ass, but the next day I sat down to lunch in the cafeteria when I see him and his friends take a table on the other end of the room. I casually walked over through the crowd and jumped across his table landing on his tray and started fighting. The result. He kicked my ass, don't get me wrong I was getting my licks in, but it was mostly him tossing me around like a rag doll. Wednesday I hung around until his baseball practice was over jumped him going into the gym. Thursday got a hall pass from a teacher and jumped him in the quad with his art class. That Friday after school I was going home when someone informed me that he was walking home two blocks ahead, I took off running to catch up to him, and he started running when he saw me coming. He made home before me and the crowd that had gotten used to me initiating a fight. This kid's oldest sister came out of the house as I stalked back and forth in front of that all looking very bored about the whole thing and said that her brother said he was sorry and would I please stop fighting him every day. I took that as a victory and stopped. My reputation was set. I was the crazy little guy you didn't want to get started. I seriously had no more trouble throughout high school. In third grade, I was really short, and still am, so of course I acquired a bully quite easily. For months on months I'd come home with fat lips, bruised backs, and knots all over my head. Parents kept complaining, but the school was doing nothing, including not telling us about and withholding the bullying reports we were supposed to fill out for every single incident, so after 7 months, my dad taught me how to fight and told me if he bullies me again. Stand up for myself. Of course, the next day at recess he punches and kicks me, and that was it. I punched him and he fell, then I got on top of him, and continued to hit him, until a teacher pulled me off, Christmas story style, and then I was sent to the office for fighting, but not the bully, since I was the one beating him. Well leaving him on the playground, was a huge mistake. This kid bullied almost the whole grade, so when all the kids saw me finally stand up to him and get in trouble for it, they all got kickballs, footballs, soccer balls, etc. pinned him into a corner and went at him. So bad in fact, when the school called my parents about what happened, they said I was in trouble because I fought another student and incited a faking riot. Apparently the kid came out of the ball bearing ballistics really faked up and then transferred schools. My younger brother and this kid, who will Ben's younger brother got into it at the bus stop. The next morning at the bus stop he got in my little bro's face. You been faking with my little brother, fuck you. Started pushing him. Ben was a senior and I was a freshman. He probably had about 50 pounds on me at least. I did the only thing I could do and pushed him, told him to back off my bro. He immediately pinned me in the ground against a hill. No hitting just mounting. He got real close to my face and told me he would beat the sheet out of me. I tapped out and he went right up to my brother and said see, that's what's gonna happen to you. We fell into an awkward silence after that. I was already plotting my revenge and my brother looked at me with a knowing smile. Later that day, the kid came up behind me during lunch in the cafeteria while I was sitting and eating my lunch. He got right down in my ear and said I heard you been talking sheet, which I hadn't telling people you can kick my ass. Well let's go then. I explained to him that I hadn't mentioned our earlier incident at the bus stop, but it didn't register. Come on you bussy. Let's go. What, are you afraid? I told him I didn't want to fight, and he left with a faking bussy muttered under his breath. I spent that entire night fuming mad and fantasizing about beating this kid's ass. I even vented to my mom about the whole situation. I warned her I might be getting in a fight the next day. Her reaction was basically go fuck him up. I dc if you get suspended that was pretty much all the permission I needed. The next morning at school, during our break after first period, I was on a mission to hunt this kid down. My friend and I went around looking for him, asking people where he was hanging out. I ended up with a large crowd of spectators following me through the hallways who just wanted to see this sheet down. I had people warning me I was about to get my ass beat. Finally, I turned a corner and there he was waiting for me. What? We gonna do this beach? Let's do it then. 
he said as I dropped my backpack and marched toward him. He went to take his sweatshirt off and I just faking rocked him with a right huck with everything I had. Every one ounce of hate and anger that I carried with me in my young life. He immediately dropped to the ground and I jumped on him and pounded in his face until a nearby teacher tackled me off of him. The teacher asked me who is this kid to you? I said, he's just a kid who's been picking on my brother at the bus stop. Then the teacher led me through the huge crowd of kids that had gathered around to watch the fight into the principal's office. I was a kind of a celebrity for the day. Ben was busy hiding his face in his locker and crying. Long story short, I got suspended for two days and my mom picked me up and took me out to lunch. He got suspended for two weeks for bullying because all the kids in my lunch testified that he was threatening me. The kid never talked to me again and I even had a class with him next semester. Wouldn't even look me in the eyes. Who's the beach now, Ben? TLDR. Kicked my bullies as in from if the whole school. He cried never talked to me again. A little backstory I suppose. I was bullied by this kid in junior high for no reason other than I was a loner and an easy target because of that I suppose. Anyway, he'd attempt to trip me, ram his shoulder into him a few days into the second semester of school. When our classes changed I found out he was in my woodworking shop class. He missed school often, as most bullies do lol. I loved wood shop and was real good at it, so I did as much as I could to make things. One day I was finishing up a stool or something, sanding it with hand sandpaper. He came up to me at the desk and I just panicked. Heart started beating, sweats, just nervous etc. etc. He asked can you help me finish my item? I was dumbfounded, should I help him since he bullied me for no damn reason or should I be the one to step up and be the bigger man and offer my services of woodshop? Well I ended up assisting him that day and the next, helping him use the bandsaws, drills whatever he needed to finish his item. I had done enough things in the class to pass long ago, so I had essentially free time anyway. At the end of the class on the second day, his item was finished, and it was put in the machine that sprays a clear coat on the wood. He reached out his hand, and said thank you, I shook it back, and said no problem, then I apologize for being mean to you, you're a pretty cool guy, if anyone bothers you let me know. We became good friends after that and kept in contact over the remaining years of junior high and he moved out of state from what I know. When I was in 6th grade I was bullied like every day. So there was this all white outfit I saw at JC Penney's that I wanted so bad but my mom said I had to pay for it myself. She thought it was too thuggish and it was like $95 plus tax looking back it was a thug outfit. It had the hat shirt pants and shoes. I seriously thought it was the sheet and I wanted it with, like I wanted to live. I did little odd jobs here and there, washing cars recycling cans, basically anything that I could think of. Eventually I ended up raising like $80 my mom ended up giving me the rest. I finally got it like Saturday and Monday I was so ready to wear this outfit I was up like a hour early, so I could iron and re-iron it. So I get to school, and I am truly feeling myself like nobody couldn't tell me anything I felt, like I was walking in slow motion and everyone was just turning their heads and money was falling around me. It wasn't until my art class that my day was about to nuclear bombed. Kenneth the guy who bullied every single day about something decided it would be funny to throw paint at me. Not even like a little on a paintbrush which would have been a dick move oh no this faker took the whole point cup and threw it on me as I was walking out of the room black paint all over the front of my brand new all white thuggin outfit that I raised almost $100 for. In case you didn't know I was pissed like I probably could have beat down the hulk with Thor's hammer. But I was too shy to say or do something so I just went to my locker to get my book when Kenneth comes up behind me cracking jokes about this biggest black spot on my clothes. He knew I was mad too and he knew I wasn't going to do anything so he got all up in my face teasing me and all that jazz. Normally he would have been right I would have just took it and felt shitty the whole day but he was wrong. I beat him down I absolutely list it. The campus police officer saw and was telling us to cut it out, it was clear I was the winner of the fight and it should have been over, but instead of stopping I picked him up put his head between my locker and just slammed the door over and over. When they finally got us apart they called out parents. 
and all the other school protocols my we talked to his mom, he had to be rushed to the hospital. After hearing what happened his parents didn't press changes which I was scared sheetless they were. After that I never really had any problems with anyone. We never became friends or were on good or even okay terms in fact I'm ashamed to say that when he tried to apologize I spit in his face. At the time though all that mattered was I wasn't being picked on or anything. A bully chased me around the streets for 18 months beating me up at every opportunity. One of my foster sisters had to grab my mum one day to help because I was being strangled by two women much bigger and older than me and I was on the verge of unconsciousness. One day she cornered me when she was alone and I was just so fed up of being beaten up and being scared that I just flipped like a crazy woman and beat the absolute crap out of her. I was screaming and shouting so attracted a small crowd of nozzy kids who just happened to watch little tiny me beat the living daylights out if someone much bigger and much older than me. Had to be one of the proudest moments of my life when my best mate saw me and said she didn't even get one punch in, did she? Because I didn't have a scratch on me. The exact same thing happened with my ex who used to enjoy using his fists, he only decided to stay away from me when he started beating me up one day. I flipped and gave him right what he deserved after 3 years of me taking his sheet. I went home shaking and crying and saw, phoned the police and it was only when they came back and said if you want to press charges against him, you'll be arrested too because there are no visible marks on you but your ex is in a bit of a bad way. Let me put it this way, I don't think that blood all over your jacket is yours. I'm about 5 foot tall, don't know how to punch to save my life. And any type of confrontation has me running for cover. My fight or flight responses are also quite abnormal, and if I'm in extreme pain or I feel I'm in danger my body just shuts down, and I black out or have seizures. Basically, I'm a fragile little thing, but when pushed too far you don't want to be within arm's length. And I won't remember a single thing of it afterwards either. This guy had been a pain for at least a year, if not longer. He was a big kid, both height and weight, and would often use it to intimidate people. In any case, one lunchtime me and my mate are hanging out, and he comes over. He's cool with my mate, but doesn't like me, and starts being a dick, and making fun of me, before saying something about how I needed permission from him to do things. At the time I ignored it as him being a prick. He kept doing it for about a week, until one science lesson wherein he started it again, saying I needed permission to do something or other, I do not remember what, and began following me around as I tried my best to just walk away. Either way he managed to corner me and kept at it, which was probably his mistake. If there's one thing I know about trying to intimidate people it's that, if you corner them, they are more inclined to fight, because they can't flee. So since I'm cornered, I take a swing at him, then another and another. Somehow I got him to the floor, when the teacher stepped in, and broke us up. I didn't get told off for it. I can only assume the teacher saw that I was intimidated, or that my track record of not fighting before then was enough to suggest I was provoked. Either way, the guy never bothered me again. I have two, both in freshman year of high school, both in my pet class, but two different people. First one, there was this annoying little prick who talked sheet to people, acted like he was the sheet, and play forward slash physically faked with people. Im sitting outside the boys locker room after changing, while we waited for the teacher. This guy comes up behind me, while I'm talking to a friend, slaps the back of my head, then goes to run away. I turn around, just as he leaps over a pile of backpacks, I kick his back foot, so his legs cross, just as he is landing, and immediately falls hard, scraping himself up on the cement. He ended up leaving me be, and eventually becoming a decent person. Next little sheet head was this short nerdy douche that also talked sheet, did little play fighting, and made bad and inappropriate jokes. Again, I'm outside the locker room after changing, while waiting for the teacher, there is a gentle misting upon our heads, and this pint sized prick starts play kicking and punching around me, occasionally making minor contact, while speaking poorly of me. I ask him to stop, then tell him again, that I'm tired of his bullshit, and yet he continued. A kid comes up a bit short, I cup his ankle and lift, his bottom foot slips on the wet ground, and he flips almost upside down landing on his head. 
he goes to the nurse, and I to the neighboring office, where I lie out Myers saying that I was sorry for this accident. Got off scot-free, he left me alone from then on. 9th grade, boarding school. I'm a 98 pound quiet, nerdy looking 5 feet 5 inch bookworm with wire rimmed glasses. I'm on the dorms only, pay, phone speaking with my single parent mother who is over 2000 miles away when this lanky, fugly, 6 feet 1 inch senior strolls by and pushes down the receiver, abruptly ending my call. Instantaneous white hot rage floods me full of adrenaline as Kevin laughs and strolls on down the hall. He's about 30 feet away, when I bolt down after him at a full run, launching myself at his shoulders feet first when the distance between us narrows to 10 feet. He goes sprawling onto his face as I land on top of his back, and proceed to channel Ralphie from A Christmas Story and pound my fists into his face from both sides, while straddling his back, and calling him every filthy name I ever heard. Eventually the beefy bastard dorm monitor, also a senior, pulls me off the battered and bleeding SOB, and I walk back to my room while he helps Kevin limp to his. I fully expected a late night visit from Kevin and or a gang of seniors out for blood and payback for a while after that, but it never happened, because word quickly spread that I was a psychotic judo expert who was not to be faked with. Really it only ended after we graduated primary school, but their store is more interesting to tell from this one so without further ado, one time this girl, let's call her Mary, found a lighter on her way to school. Now, Mary was a part of my group of friends so, as any kid would do, at lunch my friends and I watched Mary light various leaves and bits of paper on fire. Mary was my primary school bully, at least she was 4 year 5 6 so, as any bully would do, she threatened to burn me. I didn't budge. She got closer, holding the lighter in a menacing fashion. Said I'm gonna burn you. I knew she wouldn't do it, so I didn't budge. Once more she got closer, holding the lighter only a couple of centimeters away from my face. I could feel the heat of the flame. I'm gonna burn you. Go ahead. There were a tense few seconds, where everyone was silent, then she took the lighter away from me, and went back to burning other sheet. As I said earlier in the story, Mary was a part of my group of friends, and I liked all the others too much to leave the group. At one point Mary convinced the others, to run away from me. Whenever I got close, that was probably the most devastating thing for me. I'm still a little faked up from that tbh. But jokes on her, because when we hit secondary school the group stayed together, but she became a real beach, and started sheet talking all of us to another group of girls at the school where all the girls of the group went. The girls of my group found out and now none of us are friends with Mary anymore. The day I found out about that was one of the happiest days of my life. I felt a lot of closure. Truth be told, I understood why Mary bullied me, and I deserved it in the end. But she's the reason I have trust issues, and I still get paranoid that my friends don't like me all because of what she did to me, so she can go to hell for all I care. I was an easy target. Red hair, freckles, only kid from my primary school to go to this high school. Everyone was trying to assert their dominance at the new school. So naturally I got the rough end of the deal. Everyone and anyone picked on me 5 weeks into term, and it was lunch, and every boy in my year went to the basketball courts. I had the ball, had a shot, missed it. The biggest guy in the year started to talk crap again, and all of his mates joined in. Now this guy was your stereotypical bully, tall, fat curly hair, and an idiot. Fast forward 20 minutes they found a new target. The new target I knew from playing sports, nice, but pretty useless. So by then I had enough, walked up to him, and told him to stop, being such a useless piece of shit. Biggest swear word I knew, when I was 12. No I have to preface the next part of the story, with I was a country kid going to a city high school. So with that I was naturally stronger than almost everyone in my year. I had also got boxing lesson from my father, he was a state champion. Even though I looked like a chubby nerd with red hair, I was more than adept at offending myself. So anyway, the bully turns around, looks at me, swings a punch, I managed to duck and back away. The bully ran at me, he grabbed me. There was a tussle for a few seconds, I managed to get in position, and lifted him up. Now I could have slammed him into the ground, but my rational side came out. 
I dropped him, no more than half a meter from the ground. I helped him get up, and just walked away. From then on, while I did get a few little taunts, I felt like I had some mutual respect from everyone. And that's when the bully left me alone. This is not my bully story but something I personally witnessed in high school that is a lifetime memory. We had the usual cliques. Jocks, freaks, jeeks and cowboys. There was this one guy who like me did not want to be part of a clique. I didn't care who or what you were. If we got along, it's cool. There was a guy that was always sort of quiet. Sort of like kung fu personality. But he was smart as a whip, nice, and he and I got along just fine. One day right after gym class I walked into the locker room, and he was there, and one of the biggest asshole bullies in the school was trying to start a fight with him. I was trying to digest and figure out how to react, I would have helped my acquaintance against the bully as whole everything was happening fast. So, the bully slams the locker door towards him, and the intelligent one tells him twice I don't want to fight you man. That was the bully's downfall. He took that as a sign of weakness and threw the first punch right at the intelligent one's head. Ladies and gentlemen, I have never seen a can of whoopers opened up like I did that morning 20 seconds and it was over. Seems the quiet, intelligent one was very well versed in martial arts and he just unloaded like Bruce Lee, I sheet you not. I started laughing and didn't know what to say, so I just looked at the bully who was on the floor bleeding with what I heard was a broken nose, and I said, should have listened to him. He said he didn't want to fight. I don't know whatever happened to the quiet intelligent one after high school. He was a fair bit smaller than the bully. But man did he teach one bully a serious life lesson that day. Don't fuck with people. You never know what you might get. I was going through a really rough time during my 7th grade year. I had 3 people very close to me pass away, and one of my best friends moved across the country for her father's new job. After this incident I was diagnosed with depression, and took medication for a year, until things became better. It happened on a Tuesday in mid-March. Now, the week and half before this, I had unexpectedly found my grandmother's body in her house before school, so I was still shaken up and mourning. This girl, named Alexis, knew what had happened and tried to use this to her advantage while bullying me. Alexis started off that morning with the name calling, fat shaming, etc then escalated to pushing me against the wall and spitting in my face. During that time I mostly took it, not wanting to get in trouble with school and be yelled at by my already mourning and upset parents. I kept quiet and waited for her to finish until she said. I bet your grandma wanted to die, if I was your grandma I'd kill myself in disgust too. After she said that, my vision became red, and I just lost control. I grabbed her long hair, wrapped it around my hand, to get a good grip, pushed her up against the wall, then repeatedly slammed her face against it a good 20 or so times, not exaggerating. My ex navy seal principal had to break us up, and she was sent to the hospital with a dislocated slash broken jaw. Thankfully, he listened to witnesses and knew what I going through and never gave me any in or out of school suspension. Alexis, though, was sent to juvie for two weeks after getting out of the hospital fighting and bullying. TLDR, don't bullying someone whose close family member just died and try and taunt them with it. You're liable to get a broken jaw. I need to note that when I was younger I would black out when I got really mad and wouldn't really be in conscious control of myself, but I had enough self-control that it rarely ever happened. I was bullied through pretty much all of elementary and middle school, and it continued a bit into high school. I was always a bit of a fat kid and wasn't great socially, so I was a pretty good target. Generally I was smart enough to mostly ignore it, and was lucky enough it never really escalated to anything dangerous. However, one of the bullies screwed up when I was in high school and I had to shut it down. I started singing in choir in 7th grade and continued doing it through college. I'm not the best, but I really enjoyed it and took it seriously. Unfortunately, as a freshman I had to be in the men's choir with quite a few people that didn't want to be there. One of these guys was one of the only people still bullying me. He was taller than me and definitely had a bigger, more athletic build than me. So here I am, a freshman in high school and we are having a concert. 
for this specific song, all of the singers from all of the choirs are standing in the auditorium around the audience to provide a different experience and whatnot. The section I'm in is in the back, so most of the people aren't looking at us, and we have a wall behind us. Well lucky me ends up with one of my bullies right next to me, and while I could tolerate his crap normally, he made the mistake of messing with me during the concert. Like I said, I enjoyed choir and took it seriously so this royally pissed me off. Next thing I know I have him pinned against the wall and tell him in no uncertain terms to never mess with me again. I get myself back under control and perform the rest of the concert. After that, he never spoke to me again and even avoided my general vicinity. TLDR, high school bully messed with me while performing in choir concert. I got blackout mad, pinned him against a wall, and forcibly told him to never talk to me again. It worked. From this year, actually, all three schools, elementary, middle, high, in my district are right next to each other and super small, so buses are preschool seniors. There's this one douchebag 6th grader who constantly gives me a chick who's a good bit taller than him, and known to take down as holes like him, sheet. First time I got this kid was when he said something about me sucking my dad's dick. I was so faking done I reached around a front handed him right across his mouth in front of everybody. Everybody's in silence, but they've got pride in their eyes. Nobody likes that kid, literally whenever he rides the bus, it's dead quiet fuck him. The second worst time, there was a conversation I was having with my friend when he said something like, maybe you should eat a hamburger, you stupid faking an anorexic beach. Hell no. Backhanded that faker to the face, Hardy was at lost of words, and kept trying to hit my knuckles with his fist, before I punched his hand too. Everybody starts cheering for me. Once again, fuck him. He's the worst kid I've ever met. Apparently he didn't get it the first couple of times, or maybe he did, because he got his fourth grade brother to back him up, insulting my looks. To be fair, I'm a good looking person. I'm not hot, but I'm cute, so he's trying to take down my confidence with this. They're saying I have a big head, small head, bad hair, my eyes are too big and my mouth is too small, sheet like that. I went all in. How faking dare you? If you haven't already faking realized, nobody on this bus likes you stupid little sheets. Maybe you should shut the hell up and start taking some hints. You can't really be talking sheet when that's all you are, and you certainly can't be talking about my looks when you obviously don't own a faking mirror. Maybe you should get your dumbers out of here and think about who you're talking to and how tiny you are before you try to play faking games. Now, shut up. Everybody starts clapping. Little brother starts throwing 4th grade insults again, and his brother, main problem, says, will you shut the fuck up? Oh my god, in a whisper, clearly embarrassed by how I just faked him up. Received quite a few high fives and a huge amount of respect from the other kids on the bus. Didn't ride for the rest of the year. Good riddance. Got a bully in high school sent to prison for 5 years for mail fraud. Context, I was one of the quiet kids. You know the type, those that typically snap and shoot up the school, or at least plan on it? I didn't do any of that, but mostly I just wanted left alone. This apparently went at odds with one of the boys in my school, to the point that he would bully me to no end. Nothing overly physical, but mostly just annoying stuff. I ignored 99% of it, right up until the mailbox started, being stuffed with, so many magazine subscriptions and free sheet, this is before the internet was a thing, that it took two boxes or more to deliver our mail. My parents were beside themselves, and it only got worse, when the various magazines started calling for their fees which hadn't been paid. Eventually, the government got involved, with the MBI, Mississippi Bureau of Investigations, taking the case. They quickly found where all the subscriptions had been mailed from, the local post office, and then through investigations, discovered the boy at my school was to blame. Some two months into this whole affair, with maybe three weeks till graduation, the police and MBI showed up at the school. We were in study hall at the time, where that bully happened to be also. The police came in, and in front of everyone arrested him and another student, accomplice, for multiple counts of mail fraud. He had been an honors student, with several scholarships both academic and sports based. I believe that given the severity of the case, 
his bond was set at $250,000, while his accomplice turned informant to dodge being charged. So, here you had this guy with the future ahead of him, who suddenly ended up being expelled, his scholarships nullified, and sent to prison for 10 years for mail fraud, out in 5 for good behavior, all because he thought it'd be funny to play a prank, as he said at his trial, on one of the kids at school. In 9th grade I used to catch the bus with this absolute bedpan of a girl in 11th grade. She was this angry Slav chick with an ugly accent, a bad attitude and way way too much foundation. Like, bad skin and tried to cover it up, but the craters were so deep her head just looked like putty. She thought she was hot too. Anyway, she used to lip off to me unprovoked a little bit, but it was the way I used to see her treat other kids that pissed me off. She used to taunt this girl every bus ride, just because she was one of those kids who kept to herself. Girl never even made eye contact with her, but she used to say some horrible sheet. These buses were city buses most of the time, except between 3.15 and 4, when the school would rent them, so occasionally you'd find strange items on them. Well one day, I happened to find a dank, stinky torn up shoe on the back seat that could only have belonged to a homeless person. When Sabina was berating the lonely girl, I interrupted her by telling her to shut the fuck up before hitting her square in the head with the shoe from across the bus. It doesn't end there. She retaliated by slapping me with it, which I retaliated to by emptying my apple juice all over that beach's head. Everybody laughed at her, and she sat there sticky and silent the rest of the way. She never gave anybody sheet when I was on the bus after that. I grew up on a small cul-de-sac in Jersey with a bunch of other kids my age. Around 1976 we were all roughly 9 years old. One of the crew, my best friend and neighbor, Keith, was a budding sociopath, and I say that with some medical expertise under my belt. But you know, I just thought he was cool, because he was always doing things I was afraid to, like beating people up, shoplifting, chasing, and shooting at me with his BB gun. Swearing magnificently, breaking into houses, pinching and smoking his mom's cigarettes, putting me in headlocks, threatening me with other violence, and acting on it occasionally, at least often enough to know he was serious, etc. He was legitimately badass, so of course I wanted to be his friend. One day I went over to his place to hang out, and found him in the street riding his bike. The second he saw me, he aimed his schwin in my direction and pedaled faster. I managed to run zigzag out of the way. He immediately turned around and came after me again. This was repeated about six times. I asked him to stop. That made him try even harder to pancake me. I had never really stood up to him before, but for some reason on this day, I got mad. Now, I was a small kid, and he was way bigger and meaner. I was smarter. I noticed he used the same pattern every time, accelerate towards me hoping that his cruising speed would eventually outpace my foot speed. So on about his 7th try, I spun around faced him and stood my ground. Just as the front tire was about to crush my nuts I stepped aside, grabbed the handlebars, and twisted them 90 degrees to the bike frame. Yeah, it was a bloody road rash mess. The funny thing was, as he sat there on the pavement picking asphalt out of his elbows, he actually challenged me and asked me why I would do that to him. I very calmly explained the primordial argument that he left me no choice. It was me or him. You know, through his tears, I actually saw his expression change and a light click on. He got it and only minimally faked with me again. God knows, he did some repugnant and awful things to other people for decades following, but he gave me some space. Have you ever had those sort of checkups when you were younger? They measure your height, weight, stuff like that, and compare you to where you should be, the average for you age, or whatever. I have always been an anomaly on the graph. Oldest in the year, even by just a few days. Tallest, a few centimeters. Broadest. Heaviest, no, not fat or obese etc. Longest arms. You get the point. I was a freak to the bullies, and got bullied in every school, and as always, every school had its number one bully. The kind of guy that was always surrounded by a posse of cunts that rallied around him all day to look as tough, even though 90% would run away from a mouse fart. When I was about 16, 
One such guy thought it would be funny to dry hump me from behind during DT class, design, and technology, basically drilling and sawing stuff to get a laugh from his kernels. The teacher wasn't in the room. Some of my friends told him to fuck off etc. I snapped. I'd had enough. I just turned around, grabbed him by the throat and started walking. He frantically tried thumping my arm in panic. I didn't let go. I lifted him up and slammed him down with just one arm onto the workbench behind me and leaned my weight into his throat, locking my arm in place. Not crushing his throat, just enough weight to make him feel how serious I was. His legs were kicking. His kernel stood there gawking apparently. Our eyes locked and I just calmly stared at him. I could see the sheer terror in his eyes. Must have held him for about 5 seconds. I let go, turned, went back to my bench, and carried on working, or whatever bullshit we did in DT. He never so much as went near me again. I don't condone violence, but to honest, sometimes it's the only way to beat a bully. Sure, you'll both be in trouble. But the bully will be exposed, the parents get involved, bullies parents deny it, your parents fight back saying he's always been a bully etc. Worse that happens, you get suspended, or a week's detention or something. If anyone in future asks why you got suspended, all your life you can say I stood up to the school's bully by punching him in the face. Back in the 70s, when they started desegregating the schools, I was riding the bus to school when two black girls, I'm white, started hassling me. They started throwing things at me. A balled up piece of paper, a pencil, etc. At first, I just ignored it. Then they started throwing bigger things. A sweater, a book. That was it. I started throwing the things back. After I threw the book back at them, one of the girls, who was quite a bit bigger than I, came at me and started hitting me, so I started hitting back. The bus driver pulls the bus over and separates us, and then we continue on to school. Eventually, the principal calls us into his office and asks us about the fight. We looked at each other and then back at him. I say, fight? We weren't fighting. We were just goofing around. She says the same thing. He looks at us, knowing we were both lying, but since we seemed to agree he just made us go back to class. She and I weren't friends after that, but I think the fact that I didn't squeal on her earned me some respect. We always said hello to each other in the hall, and she never bothered me again. I'm tired so I won't elaborate right now, but this kid had it out for me because his ex wanted to date me. He's older, bigger, way more athletic and hangouts with gangs. Words were exchanged starting on his part, he pushed me, I flew back a few feet but didn't fall. I grabbed this huge faking desk picked it up, like it was nothing, and whipped slash hurled this thing at him. It hit him, and absolutely dominated him. The fight was then broken up, and I was dragged into the hallway, that's where instead of going to the office like a normal person, I waited for him. All the students poured out of the classrooms to watch, as he walked out and down to the office I called him out to square up for a 1 vs 1 fight. He looked scared, never looked me in the eye and almost did a light jog down to the office. Now he holds doors for me, says sorry and thank you. He is now a very polite person around me and has never gave me a mean look again. Also his squad has never bothered me and when they walk by no one talks, no looks, or breathes my direction. Everyone in my school just had more respect for me after that. I know this was kinda long, but trust me, I'm kinda shorting I. This will never be seen, but I got into a fist fight with 7 or 8 kids I got smashed, but I gave as good as I got they felt me alone after that. This was in grade 6. And I didn't get into trouble, because no one reported it, it was in a secluded area, where I was eating and trying to avoid them. After said fist fight a few got embarrassed that a little runt like me had caused so many sore balls, eyes, and noses so according to them 7 or 8 kids fell down the stairs. One of the best moments of my life. I'm snap after a while and I used to get bullied so badly I've got a few more stories of violence, if you guys want to hear them. Edit 1. I know nobody asked, but I have to get some of this sheet of my chest. 
When I was in kindergarten I was bullied by this one really nasty piece of work he would steal my cloths and my toys and my foot so one day when he went to steal my pencils I may have grabbed the heavy duty cardboard scissors, yes I know it's misspelled, and cut of his pinky and almost severed his ring finger. Edit 2, another time much later, grade 8, this kid would not leave me alone I took his sheet for half a year, before I got tired of it, I had one class with him English, so that lesson I sat behind him, and halfway through the lesson, when he leaned back I grabbed my iPad and smashed him several times in the head with it, I never saw him again. When I was in probably first or second grade, I would walk home from school every day with my sister who was in the 4th grade at the time. The walk was relatively easy, except for the same group of kids that would always bother my sister and I walking home. They would follow us around, and yell things out, and pretty much just do whatever they could to be dicks. Anyways, the solution was pretty simple. I was tired of this specific 6th grader messing with my sister, so one day I went up to him, and just socked him in the face, mind you I'm like 6. The kid then proceeds to punch me in the face. It hurt. So after the fight gets broken up and everyone gets on home, I tell my mom what happens, and she's pretty proud of me. My mom was born and raised in Morocco. And my reaction to the bully was the norm for a child being raised there. Overall, the kid gave me a black eye, but luckily I gave him one too. The fact that he had to get a black eye from a 6 year old he was bullying when he was twice my age, and the fact that he gave me a black eye in return was probably embarrassment enough to never bother my sister and I again. I was in third grade on the wrestling team as a heavy lightweight, just really learned the basics before we had our meet versus three other schools in the district at a high school. I was a bit overwhelming with everything going on. Anyways, they call for my school's light heavyweight, and I misheard it, so I go to the mat. There is this larger kid there from another school with a face that looks like his nose was smashed into his face with a frying pan. He just looks at me and says I have to wrestle this little thing. Well I'm used to wrestling bigger kids because I have three older brothers, me and him wrestle, to draw until I chicken wing him and connect the fingers on my hands. They award him one point because that was illegal and he wins 1-2-0. Flash forward to 6th grade. It's the first year when they had a 6th grade go to junior high school where there are now kids from another elementary school mixed with the one I went to. I'm doing good avoiding bullies until gym class where some 8th grade start bullying the 6th graders. They have me a few of my 6th grade classmates surrounded and are about to start hitting on us. Out of nowhere comes that kid I wrestled, and he has gotten bigger and started puberty, I think he had failed twice, so he was 2 years older, but in the same grade as me. Anyways he came in wailing on these chumps, and bloodied some noses, before they all took off. He looked at Mimi, and said I remembered you, you earned my respect. After that day he bullied the bullies, and looked out after me. My best friend growing up had an older brother two years older, that tormented me relentlessly. We lived three houses apart and all hung out in the same group of neighborhood kids. When I was in fourth grade the bully was in sixth grade, which is the last year at elementary schools in this part of the world. During one walk home from school in that fourth grade year he was teasing me and shoving me around a bit while we all, six or seven of us, were walking home together. At one point I just faking snapped. In one smooth fluid motion that would have made Bruce Lee proud, I bent my knees a bit, spun around and while lunging forward, and up I rocketed both my arms fingers up palms out into this dude's chest as hard as I could. He was lifted off the ground, and landed flat on his back, getting the wind thoroughly knocked out of him in the process. When he recovered he just stared at me in shock. I got a few congratulatory pats on the back which I shrugged off, and barked leave me the fuck alone. None of the neighborhood kids ever bothered me again. I got into a huge fight at school after weeks of persecution from this guy who followed me around the playground with his gang hurling abuse at me. I went to sit on a bench and he followed me and got right up in my face while I was tying my lace POW. I just snapped and start beating the evil living sheet out of this guy. The headmaster came out and shouted at him to sit down on the bench, which he did, while he tried to restrain me. I, seeing the red mist just wanna punch this kid's lights out, so I elbowed the head in the bowl, locks so he let go, and got back to ripping into the guy. 
All I remember after that is a deputy head dump tackling me to the ground and both him and the head holding me down until I calmed down. I didn't get any repercussions afterwards because I never fought and was generally quite quiet and kept to myself. I think they knew I just reached boiling point. From that point on the kid was scared to even look at me. TLDR. Kid pushed me too far, so I beat the sheet out of him. I had a couple of occasions. First was when I was about 13, and what provoked the bullying was that I slipped during a race, they'll literally bully you over anything. Anyhow, fast forward two weeks later, and I had about 11 kids threatening me, come at me one on one fair enough, but a group that size, the extent they cold done, if they had the chance cold been life changing. It was the point where people heard about it, fast forward to my mum calling the police, it didn't even end there. After the pupils got excluded, they got banned from talking to me, and the slightest word they'd get kicked out and that's what happened with the leader. She started harassing me in class and I just stood there saying do it. You're on your own now, bet you won't. Of course the coward didn't, and next minute she was excluded. My second time was I was walking through the corridor when I was 16 and this girl bullied me through high school and was starting it up in college and I weren't having none of it. They weren't going to make my life hell in high school and now in college. So I just stopped midway through the corridor and started arguing with her, calling her out for what she's done and she never bothered me ever again. I heard the little comments here and there but hey, everyone's going to talk. Kid kept bullying me for being fat, just generally being a dick. I'd had pretty bad anger problems as a little kid, so as I got older, I'd just ignore it and get upset and depressed, which wasn't a good idea, believe me. Anyway, one day he just kept going, followed me out the school gate mouthing off, I told him to fuck off, nearly in tears, he says what are you going to do, fight me? So I figured fuck it, what do I have to lose? So I said yeah, let's go then, taking off my tie and blazer, tossing my bag to a friend. He was taken aback at first, but then he accepted. So we start to square off, him still mouthing off about how he's going to beat the fat out of me etc. I said something like get on with it then, my bus will be here soon. So he charges me, tries to tackle me, and it quickly becomes obvious that I have the strength advantage. And that was when I realized I can use my weight to my advantage. So I shove him aside and he tries for the tackle again. I'd seen him fight other kids, yeah, he was one of those kids and he'd usually tackle, then punch the other person until they gave in. I wasn't gonna let that happen. Now, I've been a wrestling fan for years. And around this time, 2006 ish, there was this thing called the Master Lock Challenge, in which a specific wrestler would get people in a full Nelson, and they had to try and break out of it. So that pops into my head as he's still struggling against my weight, punching and swinging this whole time. I managed to grab one of his wrists, kinda swing him around as he's trying to punch, huck both his arms and lock my hands, and I just start swinging the fuck out of him whilst he's in a full Nelson. Now, keep in mind, I'd been a quiet nice kid who didn't really say anything nasty, generally kept to himself. But something just snapped, and I had one of the biggest bullies in the school at my mercy, in front of a crowd. It ended with him crying in a heap on the floor after a teacher finally saw a fight was happening, and broke it up. Must've had him in that full Nelson for 3 minutes or so, swinging him side to side. After that, bullies backed off. People started being nicer to me and interacting more with me and I ended up becoming the social butterfly I'm today. I also got quite good with coming up with snappy comebacks, which helped a lot. The bully ended up cooling off, becoming a nicer dude, but still one of the like, tougher kids that people didn't fuck with. But he was always nice to me. I remember, I still ran in the kinda nerdy slash stoner circles, and he was your standard sporty type, but he'd always chat with me, and say hey, if I passed him in the corridor, which some people found weird. TLDR, nobody breaks the master lock. When I was about 12 to 13 I was getting picked on by a kid at boarding school. He was the same size as me, I was average for my age, but I was quiet, and he was one of the cool kids. One day we were due to play in a rugby game, and he bullied me on the way to the pitch, so I turned around and refused to play. 
I didn't think any more of it, I just wanted to ignore him. Two days later his older sister dragged him in front of me and made him apologize in front of all his friends. I got on okay with most of them, but they were his mates. Apparently my older brother had found out about the bullying, I hadn't said anything to him or my parents, or even a teacher at that point. Me and my brother didn't speak much then, but he'd always kept an eye out for me, but from a distance. And he was very good friends with the bully's older sister, and she made sure he didn't do it again. I didn't get picked on after that. It was interesting that within a couple of years I'd had a big growth spurt and broadened out significantly to the point where I'd dwarfed the bully. There was a kid in my old school, who I shall call Y to give some context, his family had moved from India, to Germany where he was born, to the country where I live, Britain, and had once tried to move to Canada, sometime before this incident. I was having a small conversation about phones, as you do. At the time I was using an older model Nokia as my phone as I didn't use my phone other than to contact my parents, and that was all I needed it for. As a matter of fact, I brought this into our conversation and Y chimes in and says your phone is a crap phone. This is where I do some defending of why I had my phone, but he would just say that it was shitty, without giving any real evidence as to why it was. This goes round a few times, until Y says something that may have been offensive to my family. At this point, I raise my voice a little and drop the biggest retort I have ever used, at least I can get into Canada. This was met with the kind of uproar you'd expect in some form of battle rap from some of my friends, but Y wasn't really defeated. He went to grass on me to our form tutor, who then asked my mentor to have a word with me. I told her what had happened, and she went back to my form tutor with my side of it. Best thing is, the faker left me alone after that. The worst part is, before me and him could apologize to each other about the whole incident, he left the country. And guess where he ended up? Canada. When I was in about second grade, I was on the swing, when some fifth grader comes up and says, I want that swing, give it to me. Now this guy was big for a fifth grader, and he looked like he could knock all my teeth out of my scrawny little head with one good swing. That said, I apparently had no sense of self-preservation, because I looked up at him with this big smug grin and went, no, this is my swing. This barbarian of a child scowled threateningly and said, you better give me that swing, kid. I just kept on smiling and repeated no, this is my swing. Evidently, this Nordic child wasn't playing around, because at this point he decided to yank me out of the swing and put me in a full-on headlock. It wasn't so hard that I couldn't breathe at all, but it was terrifying anyway. That cocky grin went away real damn fast, at the very least. So I was panicking now, and I realized I needed to do something, since evidently no teachers were around who gave a sheet about a kid getting choked. So I wormed myself around, so I was facing the barbarian spawn's crotch, and purely on instinct, I wound up and punched him right in the sack as hard as I could. He immediately let me go and doubled over, grabbing onto his crotch in pain. He literally ran from me as fast as he could, holding his crotch the whole way. I got right back on my swing and went about my business. About a minute later, I saw the gigantic 5th grader across the playground with two other guys about his size, covering his crotch with one hand and pointing at me with the other. I heard him yell, leave that one alone. From like 50 feet away, I kept on giving them my trademark sheet eating grin they all ran off. Didn't get bullied at all for the rest of the year. At school around the age of 15 I was the tallest student in my year, and also pretty big in general. I got bullied a lot at the time by a group of around 8, 10 of the cool people who liked to get drunk a lot. I was just a very peaceful person, and I had quite a lot of friends among the actually cool people. They never cared about it, but the most vocal people kept making fun of me and it really got to me at some point especially as the girl's opinion started to matter more to me. When I told my mom she said to me, I should tell the main guy to shut up if he does not want to wake up in a hospital. She said she knows I always stand by what I say, and she said she would back me up if anything negative would come from school. So I did that, I confronted the most vocal bully, but he was among his friends. I told him to shut the fuck up or else. They all crowded me and forced me to a way back towards a wall. Or else what? Or else you might find yourself in a hospital soon. I said calmly and a bit hesitant. 
They all laughed, and as their leader opened his mouth I punched him in the face as hard as I could. Another few hits to the face, before he even reacted, and I hit with my elbow as well. Blood everywhere. He backed down, I jumped upon him with my knees on his chest, and hit him, until people drew me away. Turned out he had broken ribs, and a broken nose. When my teacher and the mother of the bully confronted me later that day what I said was mostly I warned him to stop making fun of me or else he might wake up in a hospital. And he kept on going. I felt completely in the right and did not see how I did anything wrong. I warned him after all. That seemed to confuse my teacher a bit. But she was confused anyways because I always was the most peaceful child and one of the best students in all classes. She probably figured I was bullied a lot before for this to happen. I did not receive any punishment. My mom was not there because she was working almost two full-time jobs at the time. My teacher said they will inform her of what I did which I was okay with. I was actually a bit happy because I was proud I stood up like my mom told me. The parents of the bully tried to show me, but it did not go through because of witnesses reporting how I was crowded and pushed into a corner by like 10 people and panicked. I guess it was self-defense in that case then. That way I learned to step up for myself and ever since have never been bullied again as I know now how to shut that stuff down early. This will probably get buried, but whatevs. I was an extremely small kid. As in, I was about as big as a 5 year old when I was 10. I outgrew my first girl, who was just shy of 5 feet, when I was a sophomore in high school. I got picked on a lot. I had plenty of friends, but every year there seemed to be someone new who would come along and make the startling discovery that I was smaller than them and they could pick me up and throw me in garbage bins or whatever. Those kids were dicks. Of all the things these guys would do, nothing bugged me more than when they'd pick me up. I hated it more than anything. So, my first week of high school, I was surrounded by a ton of people I didn't know. I came from a small middle school of about 150 kids and wound up in a high school of about 700. I was nervous because I knew that there were bound to be a couple of bigger fakers who would inevitably target me. Sure enough, one day during lunch, this dude from my health class walked up to me and started making jokes. I tried to laugh it off or tell him to shut the fuck up or whatever. But he towered over me, as most kids did, and made that very clear. So, after a short exchange in which he so eloquently used words like magit or shorty, demonstrating his incredible grasp of the English language and his fantastic observation skills, he picked me up. I felt like the whole school was watching, and a lot of them were. So he picked me up, presumable to toss me around, or carry me around, or whatever. Everyone was watching. I started seeing red. Both of his arms were occupied, and I had a perfect shot at his nose. So I popped him right in the face. His nose busted wide open, blood went everywhere, and he dropped me. The kid started crying and calling me in his hole. Everyone watching started laughing. And I swear to god, the kid left school just after it happened and didn't return for a few weeks. I assume he was embarrassed. That was the last time anyone tried to pick me up again. And the nice thing was, when he came back to school, he apologized to me. And I apologized to him. We talked it out, and we were cool after that. Not great friends or anything, but we got along fine. Oh and yeah, I hit some growth spurts, and I'm now about average height. I have two stories all involving the same group of bullies. In grade 9 my group were really nerdy. Just down the path from where we sat were another group of grade 9 kids, the jocks. Anyway, they had been tormenting us throughout the whole year, nothing physical, just threw food at us and called us names etc. And by the end of it, we had just had enough. So in the last week of school we had agreed that we would fight back if anything occurred. Anyway, in our group we had this one kid who would go pale white if you had done anything physical towards him. So the group of them searched out this kid and one of them just started kicking him and hitting him. I stood in, grabbed the bully, and threw him off of my friend. I didn't realize that there was a pole there and I had inadvertently threw the bully into the pole, and he was lying on the ground crying. His friends all surrounded me but none of them did anything. I then shoved the biggest kid in the group, 
I had made this kid cry the year earlier because he started on me in woodwork class, so I nailed him in the face some people just don't learn, and they all backed off. Never had any trouble with that group again. Until grade 12. By this time I was sitting with a new group of friends. Still considered somewhat of a nerdy group, we were actually the high achievers of the school, but were also very athletic as well. Anyway, one of the guys from the old jock group that used to torment my old friends now started doing the same thing to my new group of friends. Poor guy wasn't round in grade 9 at our school, so he thought we were easy targets. Anyway, I didn't let it go further this time. He used to just call us names, but one day he started throwing water balloons at us under the cover shading where we sat. I was pissed, because on this particular day it was raining heavily and so we couldn't go out to play soccer. Anyway, I called him out on it, and he comes up to me and gets in close to my face. We have words, then I told him to start on me so I could finish it. He refused. So I started pinching his cheeks, saying he was so cute, poked him and then started hugging him trying to provoke him into something. He didn't know what to do or say, but still refused to do anything. I then told him this needed to stop. Didn't have any issues with him at all for the rest of the year. At our end of year formal, prom for you Murikans, he came up to me and apologized. Last I heard he was doing quite well for himself, so good on him. This happened in 7th grade some details are a little foggy. I'll do my best though. The event was a beautiful day after school in my neighborhood, and the neighborhood bully was out too. He was bullying my best friend, who has high functioning autism, and I couldn't sit around and watch it happen. So I stepped in and told him to pick on me, and I told my friend to leave. My friend moved to a reasonable distance and the bully said he was going to beat me up. At that point I was scared that I was about to die, and to make things worse his friend showed up too. I said I really didn't want to fight him or his friend. He said it's going to happen, and that I made a mistake. I told my friend to just stay back, because I didn't want him to get hurt. I've been beaten up before, and I knew that he had enough going on in his life as it was, and I really didn't want him getting hurt. The bully said that he wasn't going to fight me anymore, and that he was kidding. At this point my mind was so relieved, but at the same time I was so confused. Why would the bully leave me alone all of a sudden? Are there adults around or something? I saw few bully smile and that made me way more concerned. The bully bent down, grabbed a handful of rocks, and threw them at my friend. When this happened I've never felt such a fit of rage in my body and I haven't since then even. I swear my eyes turned red like they in cartoons. I just stood there for a second trying to figure out what I could possibly do to help. I remembered what my dad told me about bullies and how to always walk away if I could, but he also told me it's important to fight for what you love and for what's right. What he also said was if you walk into a fair fight, you've done something wrong. After contemplating what to do I said to the bully alright, let's fight. I'd like to say that I sounded like Vin Diesel and then the tunnel vision starts. I tackle the bully the best I could, but I didn't do so good at it. He pushes me off his hips, kicks me and laughs. I quickly get up and move away. Then he comes charging at me, and I dodge it. We square up, and I see him wind up for a punch in the cheek. I squat to avoid it, and I return with a kick in the nuts. He looks at me, like I've just awoken the devil, and he tries to return the favor. I was able to avoid it, and I try to return with a punch to the stomach. He blocks, but his arm that he used to block somehow moves and positions my fist into the side of his jaw and I follow through with a punch. He fell to the ground. I'm just looking at him laying there. I hear my buddy scream yes, and I can't stop staring And what I just did. I just defeated my bully. The bully's friend runs over and just stares at me like I started the whole thing. Out of nowhere I hear the screams as the bully gets up. He is crying at the top of his lungs and just says you're gonna get in though month twubble. The bully and his friend get in their bikes and ride away. I look at my friend, and he looks back he says he has an older brother. I reply fack. I decide we both need to go home, tell our parents what happened, so we can at least have our parents know what happened just in case the bully's parents come to us. I dreaded telling my dad what I did. I was expecting to get grounded, go say sorry to the bully, no friends for a year, no nothing. 
My dad says he's extremely proud of me for trying to walk away and then sticking up for my bully. The bully's parents' parents come over about 20 minutes later saying I broke his jaw. My dad said no that's not what happened to the guy's dad and they have a chat on the porch. I hear the guy start yelling at my dad and then my dad stands up and says to the guy don't ever say that about my son. My dad can be damn intimidating and a few seconds later the parents left. Then my dad took me and my friend for ice cream. The end. I spent primary school, age 5 to 11, in cycles of bullying, it was probably the defining feature of my friendship group, at any one time there would be one boy who was excluded and either actively bullied or simply ignored him. There was this one kid who ran the group, and this one time I completely flipped, punching him over and over, tearing his shirt, eventually getting dragged away by teacher screaming about how I would kill him. I was a weedy kid and I barely left a mark. The worst part was that this kid was everyone's best friend. He was the most creative kid in the group so everyone wanted to hang out with him. Within weeks I was back in the cycle. Another time, the headmaster took our little group to a small room and had us sit in a circle and whilst I have the impression that the head did an admirable job of talking everyone through the issues, I only really remember him saying that he'd seen girls perform this cycle of excluding one individual time and again, but never boys. That didn't stop the cycle. It carried on for years. I came close to killing myself many times. I did manage to break the cycle myself in the end. In the last 6 weeks of our final year, I stopped engaging entirely. I just didn't go back when they kicked out someone else when it should have been my turn to be the bully. I sat in the gym with one kid. It was his turn to be bullied. Eventually he was taken back and... So I waited until it was another kid's turn to be bullied, then I played with him. I didn't enjoy the loneliness, but I was in control for those last few weeks before secondary school. Nothing in my life has made me feel as powerless as that bullying did, and I'm really proud that 11 year old me managed to resist it like that before the end. The main bully didn't go to the same secondary school, but I saw him when we went to college. He was in my maths class. He was below average and just struck me as boring. That was pretty satisfying. This was my junior year of high school due to his whole family had a pretty shitty reputation in our small town, whose clothes were always dirty and smelled of spoiled milk, picked on pretty much anyone he could I was walking in the side door of the school, it would have been about 7.30 in the morning he shoves me, and I dropped my coffee whatever. I walked into the lobby and we had one of those old coffee vending machines you put a quarter in and it gives you a poker cup and fills it with scalding hot caffeinated water. He followed me and probably called me a couple names, something about being a bussy for not fighting back. I threw the hot coffee in his face, yanked his shirt up over his head by the back collar and started beating him in the face NHL style. This was before zero tolerance, about 20 years ago, actually, and there were witnesses to him shoving me, but none to me getting revenge he got suspended, I did not the coffee must have wound up in his face, when he shoved me. First and last fight I was ever in, in high school. Edit, I just looked him up. He's in prison. There was that big guy that bullied lot of people, including myself. Mostly insults but sometimes he would push people around. One day, he pushed me, it was the first time he ever touched me. He probably did, because he wanted me to have more reaction than looking at him, and laughing when he insulted me, I guess. So, he pushed me to the ground. Stood back up. Punch right in the face, his nose bleeding absolutely faking everywhere. He faked off, and avoided me after. Another dude that was often talking shit and insulting people. At some point. He insulted me, but I insulted him back, and he stf you, because he didn't know what to answer. But he didn't quite like that I talked back. Later the same day, I was picking stuff in my locker and he arrived behind me, and pushed me into my locker. I then turned around, grabbed his head and smashed it as hard as I could in the locker beside me, then thrown him as far as I could. My locker was in the cafeteria, and it was lunch time. Over 200 people saw it. I absolutely never heard him talking shit after that. There was this annoying jackass named Gunner, not his actual name, at my summer camp when I was 14, and since we were the same age we shared a cabin. 
every day there would be a rest hour, pretty much nap time, which was faking awesome, and everyone would chill out in the cabin for an hour before the second half of the day. Anyways, unfortunately the bathrooms were contained within the cabin, and were little more than glorified stalls so, if you climbed on the top bunk next to it, you could see over if you pleased. Anyway since this was about halfway into a two week summer camp I had had a good amount of time to build a healthy resentment for Gunner. I loved everyone in our cabin except for him, he was loud, obnoxious, and pissed me off with every word he said. Anyways, I was taking a sheet as many do during rest hour, and faking Gunner climbs on the top bunk next to the stall and starts looking over like a little sheet. I told him to go away, but about 30 seconds later he starts throwing various objects over the top of the stall, and into it, while I'm taking a sheet. Obviously I can't move, or risk getting poop everywhere, and he is gradually throwing larger things, family sized shampoo bottles etc. After he threw the first one or two things I told him to stop a second time, but he kept throwing crap over the top of the wall, and I got pissed as fuck. Now I was known as one of the nicer guys in the cabin so, when I told Gunner I would beat the faking sheet out of you, if you throw one more thing it was kind of shocking. There was a moment of silence after I said that and Gunner didn't throw one more thing, slowly went back to his bunk, and didn't say anything else for the rest of the rest hour. After that moment of silence everyone in the cabin just started laughing their ass off, since they were so shocked by my reaction. In the end I think I got a good amount of respect from it, because when the second biggest guy in our cabin made a deal, due to penetrate kids I was never a target, although I can't say the same for Gunner, the jackass from Chicago, TLDR, didn't get penetrated at summer camp. I'd like to post something heroic and justice porny, but the truth wasn't actually like that. There was a kid in elementary school who bullied me quite a lot. He was the son of the police chief, and he had a gang of about 10 other boys who would back him up in fights. He wasn't particularly smart, though, and so I made fun of him. Then he'd punch me. And on it went. Neither of us backed down, though after he broke my nose I felt pretty scared of him for a while. It was a small school, so there was no avoiding him. We ended up going to separate high schools for the first year of high school and I took up weights and karate. I did them obsessively, almost every day of the week. After that first year I changed to the high school he went to, which was a very large school. On my first day there I walked onto the grounds and there he was, out the front. He saw me and gleefully smirked, then stepped in front of me. Hold out your arm, he demanded. I was actually a bit oblivious, with other things on my mind, so I just held out my arm. He grabbed it with both hands, and twisted and swiveled around to twist my arm behind my back. Except my arm didn't budge and he stumbled. He looked at me, confused. How did you do that? He asked, almost in awe. His gang watched, unsure what to do. I wish I'd had a better line, but to be honest I was surprised myself, having not realized my strength gains. I dunno. I just did, I said. Then he tried to be my friend, but even though he never bothered me again, I still didn't want to hang out. I walked into the school, made new friends, and never really saw him again. When I was in 7th grade, people used to tease me a lot. One day, one of these bullies sat behind me in class and whispered in my ear about how I was a loser for a good 45 minutes until the bell rang. So, being the little short thing that I might had no recourse but to grab my bag, all full of heavy school books and smack him in the face with it. Then I had to run and hide in the girls bathroom while people were threatening to kill me and whatnot. Kept up the death threats for a full week, but the results for him were even worse. He had to get jaw surgery and always spoke with a slight speech impediment slash lisp after that. Also, the day I realized my mother was an old, worn alcoholic who despite physically abusing me in the past, had grown weaker than me. We got into a fight and I punched her back, and I just kept screaming at her, I'm not afraid of you anymore. 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 That just felt good. I think that's the moment when you become an adult in abusive families. 
Year 10th of high school, just finished one of the tests think it was science and everyone was coming out of the hall and grouping around to discuss how they went in the test in their various groups, no teacher supervision, I was with my nerdy group talking loudly about how we all aced it, next thing I feel, like I've been hit in the side of the face and heaps of pressure, and an alien weight. I quickly turn around to see shocked. Faces of the group of cunts, Imozzi, that give us all sheet in class, I see one of them not looking my way and I just knew it was him. Tackled him at full pelt as my vision was getting blurry he was a small kid, so he went flying, faces really starting to hurt now see him looking at me with fear from the ground and notice no one is making a sound I knew something was wrong and this blur in my eye was strange. What the fuck did? I was in the middle of trying to find out what he had thrown at me, and my hand touched the side of my face, and I found the cause of everyone's silence. Trace it from above my eyebrow to below my my eye, through my cheek and the entry point below my right ear grip hold of it, before I even realize what it was, as if it wasn't inside of my face and pull it out, as though it was someone's hand holding my back. Feel it slide out was strange and, and instantly gave me some relief it was a branch tapered from splintering of the tree to a fine point with weight, was at least a kilo, not a small piece. I have a look around as I feel the relief from the pressure in my face still all shocked faces, and a few little screams not, that I heard them all I heard, was a red rage static. Find the kid between my legs he's just staring at the branch in my hands wide eyed look at me, I yelled even had a testy pop as I did, no one laughed no one even mentioned that part later, his eyes just started darting everywhere no one was looking at him I threw the branch fair in his face, head jerks back, and hits the concrete dazed him enough to stop his eyes from bouncing around his skull, don't know why his eyes pissed me off so much but once they stopped, I calmed down. Picked him up off the ground by the shirt, and slammed him against the nearest wall knocked him out which was not my intention he was just slumped against the wall as I walked away to the nearest seat, and sat there for the rest of the day watching the blood dripping and feeling ill from what I did to the guy, I'm not a violent person I get physically ill, whenever I become angry, I'm sure you can imagine how I was treated after that. Wasn't me but this one about my friend, who was about 5 feet 7 inches and wiry. We went to boot camp at Pi together, and ended up in the same forming platoon at Soy. I didn't really know him at the time, aside from his face and some of the few times we talked about sheet back home when in boot camp. Some of the marines decided that a pecking order was needed, and that he was on the bottom of it. He was the type to endure whatever, stay low and what doesn't kill you makes you stronger type or so I thought. So he took some verbal punishment, but didn't push back for a while and a few of us took offense, went to the NCOs, and when it came down on those marines, they decided to make it worse. Long story short, one night my friend had barracks duty, and one of those marines decided to give him sheet. This is when I found out my friend had a blue belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and mind you, this was over a decade ago before MMA was even a thing people paid attention to. We came back to the barracks and found this guy choking someone out with his own faking arm in the middle of the commons room. He taught me two things. One, it is the little fakers you should worry about. Two, careful with your mom retorts because you have no idea who the fuck you might be saying that to. Edit. Word. As a freshman in high school I got bullied all the time. Very minor, but I wore glasses and was short kind of nerdy kid, so I was used to it. My last class of the semester was a basic electricity class. I took it thinking it would be interesting and helpful stuff to know. What I didn't know was that was also going to be the class where they stuck all the trouble students. One day we were out behind the building working on stuff. I was standing near a fence and a few of the worst seniors were flicking pennies and bottle caps at me. I stood there still, ignoring them. They would hit me every so often but nothing more than one pinging of my shirt harmlessly. The teacher finally seeing this pulled me aside and seemed upset that I wasn't doing anything to fight back or stop them. I pointed out they were twice my size, older, and did he really want me to get into a fight? He said I could at least move to get out of the way or tell him. I explained what most teachers and parents don't understand about some bullies. They want a reaction. They want you to scream stop and tell on them. They had basically stopped when the teacher pulled me aside. I ignored them for the next week though teasing remarks and such. Soon they just left me alone. TLDR ignored bullies, they left me alone. 
a tactic that worked for me all my life. In the 5th grade I had some emotional problems from us moving around so much. It didn't help that I was pretty much constantly bullied. I remember it being the first time I honestly had a hard time making friends. Unlike now, when I'm clearly popular, being on Reddit on a Saturday night and a national holiday to boot. Anyway, our English teacher was out for maternity and the substitute forgot something in the office, so she left us for all of 5 minutes. I took my work up to the front to turn in, and one of the boys I walked past called me a dog, one of his friends barked. I snapped. I do not remember what happened after that, but I was told by my fellow students and the teacher that I walked over, grabbed him by the neck, walked over slash through the chairs and desks of my fellow students, and commenced to beat the crap out of him against the wall. The substitute screamed when she came through the door and I dropped him to the floor. That is when I apparently snapped out of my rage. The kid was at least my size, and I was a skinny 10 year old girl. Luckily for both of us, I didn't hurt him permanently. I wish I could say it helped but it just made the other kids shun me and the next year of my life miserable, but at least they didn't test me anymore. I moved schools a decent bit so new bullies after the old ones stopped. First sorry is third grade, grade 7 kid picking on me a lot, got in a first fight with him, and when that didn't work I got him kicked out of the youth group we were both on by telling the leaders he was picking on me, and tore my pants, leg of the pants I was wearing, was torn from getting, caught in my bike chain. Grade 4 bully at a new school, tried to steal my money, when I dropped a bunch of change, I beat the sheet out of him, and after he went down stupid me turned around, and got pushed into a table, broke my nose, about a quarter of the classroom was covered in my blood, but he left me alone after that. Grade 7, two schools later spent the entire year dealing with this kid's sheet, he said something can't remember what, but I lost it, and beat the living fuck out of him teacher brought us to the back room he was crying, told the teacher I said to him whatever he said to me and then beat him up, I called him a faking liar rat, got another 3 punches in before the teacher could pull me away, he left me alone after that, few weeks later and away from home, because of being abused by his parents. High school was pretty calm for me, there was one kid who bullied me a bit, don't remember doing this, but my friends tell me one day I picked him up slammed him against the lockers as hard as I could, punched him in the face, and threw him down the hall. And grade 10 I went to an alternative school, first day there was the only time I had problems, some kid was throwing staples in my hair, turn to him yell at the top of my lungs could you faking stop and fack off he jumps up puts on his tough guy voice what did you just faking say to me, you hard me fack face take a swing, stop before I hit him, he flinched and whimpered, and I was fine for the rest of my time at that school. Middle school, I was a little chubby, but played sports and stuff. I wasn't afraid to answer questions in class, so these two guys would always comment when I speak up in class, trying to get the other kids to join in, and they would also poke fun at me saying I was fat, stuff like that. My parents always told me that if I fight in school, I wouldn't be in trouble with them as long as I was defending myself. One day, they started in, and I challenged one of them to fight right there in class. He refused, saying he didn't want to get into trouble at school, but would fight after. I called him a bussy and a beach, and said he was afraid I'd beat the hell out of him, which I said what would happen. His buddy was sitting there laughing, watching his beach friend get torn apart, and didn't try to defend him. I started talking about how he was a scrub, and wore the same clothes every week and his parents couldn't afford new ones. He just sat there and took it, mumbling that he was going to beat my ass, and I told him to go ahead right now, but he refused, so I kept going, and raised my voice so other people could hear, and went on until class was out, it was like a study hall. He or his buddy never gave me any sheet again. I noticed a few weeks later he had some new shirts. I have never felt bad about this, and never will. We played little league baseball together, and I thought we were buddies. We didn't go to same elementary school, but our schools feed into the same middle school, so I was surprised when he decided he could make fun of me and talk sheet. I'm glad I exposed him for the true piece of sheet he was. He just turned into a low level pot dealer and never left town. 
when I was 13 and had just started high school, I was a skinny nerd and must have been a prime target for a big girl who liked to throw her weight around, often literally, and punch or slap people. She was stronger and more aggressive than all the other girls and many of the boys as well. One morning when waiting for English class just down the hall from the library and offices, she started pretending to play hit me. I mean, hitting me, but laughing as it was a joke, so I'd look weak and pathetic if I complained. I asked her to stop. Twice. Because even though she was hurting me, I'd been taught to use words instead of violence. She didn't stop. So I punched her hard in the stomach. She immediately collapsed and started screaming and wailing about how I hit a girl. Luckily, the dean, a tiny but ferocious woman, had heard everything from her office and the bully was suspended for a week and had to attend anger management counseling. No one bothered me again. I was a big kid, but absolutely harmless, and every asshole with something to prove had it out for me. One guy, Tony used to literally pull out the hair growing on the back of my neck in 10th grade English class, and when I'd yelp in sudden pain, all his douchebag friends would laugh and laugh. I took nearly a month of this before one day, he jabbed me with a sharpened pencil in the back, and I quickly turned around and looked at him. I remember him saying something like, what are you gonna do? Nothing. I snapped. I picked him up with his desk and threw him across the room, I was raging con it, and I couldn't control myself anymore. I was a big kid, but he was almost as big, just as tall, but skinnier. To this day I don't know how I did it, but I calmly walked over to where I threw him, and he was struggling to free himself from the desk, I picked him and the desk up again, and slammed it down on the ground. I'm not proud of this, but I also might have kicked him in the chest. By this time, the tiny English teacher had ran out to get help, and everyone else in the class had moved to the other side of the room and were just watching, perhaps in awe, perhaps terrified that they might be witnessing a murder. I got a weak suspension, he got a cracked rib and a broken collarbone. I had to meet with him and his parents for some counseling thing, and his dad was obviously upset with me until I told him what his son had done to cause the fight, then it was nothing but apologizing to me and looks of disappointment at his son. I had never really experienced bullying firsthand before. I had gone to a relatively small English boarding school, around 120 pupils across all years, and always had a good relationship with all my fellow classmates so, when it did happen it was a rarity. I mean we lived in such close quarters to each other we were literally family so to bully someone was crazy. After I left school I went to a public college to do some it related course in view of getting into university, so I had to supplement my computer science course with other modules. One day, early on, I was paired up with Kevil 820s biker type who had returned to college to retrain to provide for his young family. He was, on first appearances, intimidating. He was about 6 ft2 and built like a brick sheet house. He always wore this leather jacket that stank of as and motorcycle boots, although he never rode into college. However over the next week, while we worked on our joint project we bonded over our love of PC strategy games more specifically Heroes of Might and Magic 3 which I was able to huck him up with a copy, which made us a weird buddy pair especially seeing as I was only 16 to 17 and he was 28, but we got on well. In my extra credit class I had this one guy called Lewis who was what can only be described as a gobby chav. From the first day I guess he had me singled out. It started as just banter. Then banter that turned threatening when I retaliated. Then it moved on to just plain spiteful name calling, and then eventually physical stuff like shoving me into walls when I'd try to walk past him. Brainless sheet. I was never really sure why he decided that I was good sport I had literally done nothing to antagonize him, but then bullying has always baffled me. Why can't people just leave other people alone? I eventually stopped putting up a fight and dropped out of that class, but that didn't seem to matter to Lewis every time I saw him, he would either shove me or mouth off I just did my best to ignore him. This continued for 6 months till eventually one day during a break I had gone down to the cafeteria area where there was a small annex room that housed all the vending machines and lo and behold who follows me in? Lewis. This time he takes things too far, and he's pushing and shoving me demanding I give him money to buy food. At this point I have had enough, I have a lot of patience but this had gone on enough. 
I was about to shove him back when I heard a booming hey at the door and I look past this as Holden Kev is standing at the door. He stormed right up to Lewis backing him up into a vending machine hard. He towers over him and I actually felt bad for him because it must have been terrifying. I thought he was going to snap his little neck. Kev just glares at him and says, I you don't back off now I'm going to roll you up and smoke you. Lewis gf Todd pretty fast and that's when the bully left me alone. I went through the next 18 months seeing him around, but we never crossed paths again. I was always very grateful to Kev for that, and I often wonder how he is getting on now as we never saw each other after our course completed. Fake trying to befriend him. Faked giving in to peer pressure by making fun of, and even pushing another kid who he bullied, sorry man, it was a necessary evil. I didn't mean it. Got on his good side a little, and then convinced him to fake fight me in the bathroom, so we would both be suspended, and get time off school, he was dumb, and I was willing to pay any price to end the bullying. So we get in the bathroom and a few other idiots around us to witness the fight. So we playfully grab each other and push each other. The plan was to get riled up just enough for a teacher to hear, and then escort us to the office, and suspend us for fighting. I secretly knew that no staff member would be around during that particular time. I spent the previous two days stalking around that bathroom scouting it out. The play fight goes another minute and he finally says he doesn't think it will work. So I stand up and smash his face into a urinal, busting his lip open. He never bothered me again, and I never heard anything about it, despite there being a handful of witnesses. This was back in middle school. This jock, Brian let's call him, was always in his hole. To everyone, not just me. He had his gang of jock friends that would do whatever he said. He was a big guy, a football player. I'm a small nerd. I had the unfortunate event of getting put into a group with him, his friend, and myself for an English assignment. I'm a really good student, so I wanted this project to turn out good. The problem was, the two never worked. I talked to the teacher about it, in a non-tattletale way, asking if I could switch groups. He said no, but he'd talk to them. Next class, they work fine. And the class after that. But on the third class period, after I talked to the teacher, they started talking about football, or whatever. I said in a kind voice let's stay on task, guys. We were standing at the time, and he got all up in my face, and said don't make me beat you up, I fapped to pull party drain. Without missing a beat, I simply said you're going to beat up a kid half your size. Well, go ahead, it says a lot about you. He remained silent, backed off, and went back to working. He did his parts for the rest of the project, and never messed with me again. Not the most exciting story, but at least it worked. I had a leg brace as a kid, no siblings, I was a bookworm, teacher's pet, etc. I was an easy target who naturally did not fight back. It never occurred to me that I ought to fight back. I had to be told to do that. Bully hash one was another girl, actually a year younger than me, but physically about my size. After the teachers did nothing to stop it my parents gave me better counsel. My parents gave me explicit directions for how to beat her up in return when, how to avoid the teacher, what to do, etc. They said if I got caught I'd get in trouble at daycare, but not at home. After a few days of pep, talks I finally did it. After I gave the girl a mouthful of dirt and some fresh bruises of her own we actually became friends. I never did get in trouble for it. Bully hash 2 punched me the stomach while we were on the bus. Unfortunately for him the normal bus driver was sick and the vice principal was filling in. The VP was a close family friend of ours, called me Cupcake and Little Flamingo. The VP saw the punch take place in his rearview mirror. The bully was promptly expelled. The next year, Bully Hash 2 caught up with me in the school library. He threw a punch at me again, and I caught it in my hand, blocking his attempt. I was just as surprised that I caught it as he was. I said no, really loudly and the librarian looked over to see us. She saw me still holding his fist in my own hand with him angry and shocked mid-punch. After that he was sent to the special school for delinquents on the other side of town. I know there were others, but those other two I remember being the worst. I was a skinny nerd in high school, and it didn't help that I was the new kid. 
The high school was a bunch of separate buildings separated by walkways, and I couldn't get anywhere without someone pushing or shoving me. One day I was almost late to class and had to risk one of the more dangerous paths. Halfway down, a couple of goons see me coming and duck behind the corner. But I don't turn around. I had enough of those assholes and I wasn't going to take it anymore. Almost to the corner I hear, get ready, here he comes. I move to the outside of the path, and one of them jumps at me, swinging wild. I slammed my books down, boom, step back and block his punch, fists up and murder in my eye. They all just freeze. I swear time stopped, and they just stare at me. His friend says, Jesus, did you see, that arm come up? And the first guy says, sorry man we got the wrong guy, and then pretends to start looking for someone else. You bet you did, I say and picked up my books. I contact the whole time. I still had to watch myself after that, but they pretty much left me alone. We were seated next to each other in computer class back in freshman year of high school, and I was writing in my liver journal. She asked what I was doing, and I told her, and so she went to the same site and signed up. I watched as she created her username, Queen333, if I remember correctly, and then forgot to click the button that would make her journal unsearchable. As soon as I got home, I googled it, and sure enough, there was her first post, and it was nasty. She talked horribly about her so-called friends, exposed some really dark secrets about school faculty, and just really showed how mean and faked up she was, all in writing. I waited a few weeks until she had made enough entries that I had tons of dirt on her, and then I printed out all entries, photocopied them all 100 times, and got to school early so I could leave all 1000 pieces of paper all over the school. Oh, it was a hilarious day. That, sadly, didn't stop her from bullying me. She would always leave her binder in the quad, where our group would hang out, as if she was too cool to just carry it to and from class. She kept everything in there though, all of her assignments, projects, half-finished essays and homework, notes, important things she needed to get signed, etc. One day I went to the bathroom, while class was in session, and there was her binder just sitting there in my pathway. I picked it up and took it into the bathroom with me. I spent about 10 minutes ripping up everything in there, and then on my way back to class I dropped the papers in 10 plus different trash cans and poured chocolate milk all over them. She stopped messing with me and had to repeat the semester. Last time I saw her it was a few years back when I wanted a fake ID for a trip I was about to go on. I remember pulling up to her slum in a brand new BMW that I bought myself and handing her the money for the ID. She was living in the most disgusting, rundown, drug infested apartment complex I had ever seen. She was selling the fake ID because she needed money for drugs. We looked pretty similar, or at least we had, when the picture had been taken. She looks pretty rough now, ridden hard and put away wet calm as a beach. 1998. I remember like it was yesterday. In high school I was that tall skinny loner. I never picked a fight. I always had the popular kids make fun of me a few times a week. They always tried to get me to fight. To show how amazing they were to their friends. One day I was walking through the cafeteria during lunch. It was full of students and I brushed the back of one guy and I nudged him forward while he was taking a bite of his food. He got up and yelled at me for pushing him. He grabbed me by the collar and pushed and pinned me to against the wall with his left hand. With his right he connected with more than 10 fists to my face. I was in so much shock and my adrenaline was pumping from being forced against the wall. I didn't feel the punches. After the second or third punch I was laughing. Maniacally. The while school watching. Students. Teachers. Everyone eating food. And I was taking a beating like a champ. After his last punch, I hit him once in the stomach. And he fell to his knees and started crying. I felt bad he was hurt, but the as deserved it. At that school, I was never picked on again. Never harassed. A nothing really out of the ordinary, but I'll give it a go in middle school, grade 6 maybe? I was best friends with a foreign kid, let's call him Fahad. 
There was another kid who I never learned the name of until later who would always kick a soccer ball directly at either me or Farhad every chance he got at recess like literally every goddamn chance it was physically possible normally several times every recess. He was in grade 8. When I asked him what the fuck was up pretty early on, he replied that it, and I'm paraphrasing here, was not acceptable to be friends with an Indian kid. Farhad was not from India. I'm sure you can imagine many ways in which he said this, and I guarantee it's one of the more offensive versions you can conceive. He then punched me in the gut and got off scot-free because he had some minor disability that I didn't even know about until then. He never really got in trouble because if he did hit us, he would claim he was just playing with his friends and accidentally kicked it toward us, which is pretty believable. One day, he kicked the ball, and it hit Farhad pretty squarely on the back of the head a real cheap shot. Farhad whipped around, and running full speed at the ball as it bounced away, and booted it as hard as he could, and managed to kick it clean over the schoolyard fence. He was pretty clearly pissed, but at the time, was pretty much a bag of bones, and probably would not pick an actual fight dickhead MC. G came marching up who we learned after the incident was named Michael, real name because fuck him, and, I'd imagine in his frustration in losing his ammunition, shoved Farhad, made him land on his as pretty hard. While Farhad got back up, I walked over to Michael. Before he could even call me Gaylord, or whatever 8th graders call people, I punched him in the face as hard as I could it was, and still is, the only punch I had ever really thrown with the legitimate wish that I caused some damage. I don't really remember what specifically happened, other than the fact I got in some serious sheet when his parents found out that I touched their perfect angel. Farhad then invited me to his next birthday that year, where I ate the best Pakistani food on the planet. Michael never even looked at me wrong after that during middle school. A while later, when the three of us were in high school, Farhad and I grade 9, Mitchell grade 11, after Michael was done a pretty significant groan spurt, he caught Farhad walking home after school and basically beat the sheet out of him with help from other grade 11 friends, but as far as I know, nobody saw, and he didn't get in any trouble. When Farhad called he up after and told me what happened that night, it was the angriest I had ever been the next day, Michael was walking to school in the morning. I knew where he lived and intercepted his route and asked him if he was the one who beat the crap out of Farhad I knew the answer and so did he, but he still denied it in an arrogant kind of way. I told him he would look awful funny trying to tell lies with no faking teeth. I wish I could say I fought him and I won, but he just ran away toward the school. I didn't chase him. I figured that was, would at least make him leave Farhad alone, and sure enough, I never heard from him again. I asked Farhad about it just a few days ago actually, and I learned that was because he switched schools just a few days later. I am was pretty much the antithesis of intimidating at that point, so I guess he was just a huge bussy and didn't want to be caught without his goons. Moral of the story, act like you are willing to do whatever it takes to seriously fuck someone up, and they'll leave you alone at least in this case. When I was in 8th grade this real dickhead of a 7th grader, Zatch, liked to give me sheet for being a nerd, slutched, freak, whatever the insult of the week was. I just rolled my eyes and took it, or, you know, ended up crying in the nurse's office during lunch, until the morning my nana died. I was still in shock and stupidly decided I was going to go to school anyway. So I'm standing outside crying, while my friends try to comfort me, and Zatch comes up running his mouth. I don't remember exactly what he said. It was something about my nana deserving it. I don't remember what I did. According to the teachers, I began screaming every curse word I had ever heard and landed a solid punch on his nose, then started flailing at his face, all while crying big ugly tears. According to my friends and the band kids who were outside waiting for the bell, it was faking sweet. I was dragged to the office and chewed out before they realized I had a legitimate excuse for being that upset. Also, I was a good girl who had never even gotten detention before and a total teacher's pet. So they just quietly called my parents and told them to take me out of school for the rest of the week. I don't know if Zach got in trouble and he didn't look injured when I got back the following week. He kept making stupid comments throughout the rest of my last year there, but it was never anywhere close to as bad as it had been before I punched him. 
and I'd got a strange respect from some kids for finally doing something about the bullying I'd been dealing with since 4th grade. I was bullied relentlessly by Affin High School. Horrible young woman. Truly awful. Her own mother commented on her Facebook status, which was a comment about me being a little beach, and said go get her, honey. She led a group of about 20 to 30 students to harass me. I had left the school already, that high school had bomb threats, I'd been thrown downstairs, called a freak, when I had Bell's palsy from Lyme disease. TT was terrible. I came close to committing suicide before my mom and I decided enough was enough, and we got me out and transferred. Yet still, she led these students like her minions, because she was a popularity queen, prettiest Regina George-esque girl type. They all messaged me, saying I could kill myself, telling me things about me from years past that they hated. Calling me a lesbian, because I didn't have a boyfriend, and telling me I was having sex with my best friend, calling us disgusting, etc, etc, it was endless. I was so done with all of it, I finally just said you know what, aff, good luck getting anywhere in life with your attitude, and blocked her on Facebook, and deleted her and all her minions from FB and ignored it. TLDR, had to leave the school, then block 20 plus people on FB. This will probably be buried, but I thought it was fitting. I've posted this, before on a revenge subreddit. When I was 10 years old, my mom sent me to a summer camp in another county. I knew two other people there, and we were placed in the same cabin. The other cabin was full of the locals who had been there previous years. I was a fat awkward kid, and I got picked on all the time. This camp was no exception, but there was this one kid who was relentless. We'll call him Sam. Sam was always pushing me around, calling me names constantly. I wouldn't even eat, if he was still in the lunch area. One day we were in our cabin talking about how mean the other guys were, and I decided to seek revenge. I had to take a massive sheet, so I grabbed this plastic grocery bag, and filled it up. I took the bag to the other cabin, while the other kids were out being cool. I found Sam's bunk, grabbed a pair of his underwear, and shoved it down in the bag. After squishing it up again, I put it under Sam's mattress with a little bit of it hanging out. By the way, the stench was horrendous. Relieved I hadn't been caught I ran out of there and back to our cabin. When the bullies came back in from playing, we could hear their disgust. It didn't take long for Sam to be the new target of endless bullying. Nobody wanted anything to do with the kid that cheat himself. Guess who didn't get picked on for the rest of camp? TLDR. Made the bully look like he sheet himself and hid it. This was middle school me, just a dorky and kinda shy fat kid that would get picked on by other kids his age, but just went with the flow. Now about 2 years prior to this, I had started doing karate class for fun and exercise. Still fat, the exercise part clearly didn't work too well. 6th grade is about halfway through, and I'm sitting with my best friend. We had been friends for, as long as we could remember, and as we grew up he was always a little more nerdy than I was, but we still hung out. So you have two dorky fat kids sitting on the bus on the way home, playing with a gamma boy, Megaman was dope, and along comes two big douchebags. I'm still not that tall now, but I was pretty small as a kid and these two guys were 8th grade, pimply face jerks that had a good amount of height on me. They start teasing my friend and I for a good while, but we just ignore them. These guys were all endless though, and they saw that my friend was getting upset, almost crying, and they wouldn't let up on him, so my reaction was seriously man, this isn't any of your damn business, just shut up and leave us alone. They had a nice laugh at the little fat kid trying to stand up for himself and his friend. So what do they do? The one closest to me reaches out his hand and slaps me across the face. My brain said cut this beach, do it now, but all that my body came up with was, don't touch me again with a hard as look. So he did it again, and I had enough of his crap. Remember the karate part? I may not have been big and intimidating, but I was pretty strong for a fat kid and damn flexible. My first reaction was just to lift up my leg, while I'm sitting down, and I managed to kick him straight in his dumb face. Now he's got the biggest what the fuck face and froze for a second, before reaching out to hit me, but this time closed fist, but I didn't give him a chance just lift my leg up faster and harder this time, knowing what to do, and kicked him maybe twice before the bus lady came and separated us. 
I finally get home, and my mom sees my face red where I got smacked around, and asks me about it. I tell her, and she comes to school with me the next morning and now you have two pissed off moms, a 6th grader, and an 8th grader in the assistant principal's office dickhead's mom is trying to start up a sheet show, but I can't see why, her son was the one that started sheet with a kid. That is until she turns her kid's face towards my mom and me to get a good look at him, and am I wasn't expecting that. The kid's face was bruised blue and purple and his eye was swollen. Kid got faked up yo. My mom's reaction? Boon hecho, esilo mericio which in Spanish for you non-speakers translates to good job, he deserved it. Assistant principal asked for our sides to the story and called in our respective friends to verify. When I got the part about me kicking him in the face he had to stop me. Ask me over and over kicked him, like with your leg. Weren't you sitting down? He didn't believe me until the kid fessed up and our friend said the same. Assistant principal's reaction when it was all over and it was just us two. Damn son, that's impressive. I don't know how you reached. Me neither Mr. App, me neither. Stood up for myself and got mad street cred the rest of middle school for literally kicking the sheet out of an older kid. That day I learned two things. The app and my mom were ogs and Hispanic parents will always endorse their children faking someone up if they are being messed with. I was picked on somewhat regularly by this guy in high school who, the best way to describe him being a fat duck dynasty cast failure, was always giving me crap for being gay. Never met him, or talked to him, and he was such a dick for no reason. Fast forward to a time right before class, where I was talking to a really good friend of mine. She was that girl who had that pin-up girl perfection beauty, perfect skin, flawless soft features, and a big rack. The guy's over a few yards away shouting, slurs at me with his friends. My friend was not having it, but instead of going to beat his ass, she looks at me and says put out your hands. When I did, she puts my hands on her boobs and tells me to start caressing and squeezing them. I rolled with it, all the while she was giggling really loud and shouting how much she loved it. After the final warning bell rang, she gave me a kiss, with tongue, said bye and walked to class. The look on the bullish face was something I'd never trade for all the money in the world. TLDR. Homophobic bully no longer bullies me after one of my gorgeous girlfriends gets fondled by me to get back at him. Not me but my grandfather. This was during the depression in Alabama and he had to be around 10 to 13 at the time. He had to walk miles to get to school every morning and he would always carry his lunch pail. There were these three sibling, two guys and one girl. They would catch him on the way to school and beat his ass. This went on for a while, but one morning, they beat him especially bad and put a big dent in his lunch pail. When he got home, his daddy found the lunch pail and confronted him about it. My grandfather said that his dad told him son I ain't gonna punish you over this. You better make sure that this doesn't happen again or else. Now he knew what or else meant. Or else meant an who been so hard that you can't sit down for two months. Or else meant that the most perfect switch would be carefully picked. Or else was equivalent to 12 beatings from these three kids. My granddad woke up early one morning and walked to the spot where these kids normally jumped him and he grabbed the heaviest and hardest log he could find. He says this log was like the next best thing to a baseball bat. He hid that log up behind a fence post a while down from the spot where the kids would wait for him, and he yelled at these bullies. This is exactly the way he told it to me. Hey you sons of beaches come on over here, and get you as whooped. You can bring your as faced sister too. He said this the way a true pre ww 2 kid would. The bullies of course chased him, and he waited for them at the fence. He says when they got close to that fence, I pulled the log out, and beat the living sheet out of all three of them. I got the girl especially good because she was the meanest of them all. He says that they didn't have enough courage to even look at him after that. I guess that sometimes, especially back then, talking it out with an adult isn't really an option. TLDR. My grandfather beat the living sheet out of two brothers and a sister. I actually have two similar stories when I had to deal with an annoying classmate slash bully in school. I just want to share my story and give people that deal with bullies some inspiration on how it could go. 
Everybody is different, but I think they all redirect some form of insecurity with dominance towards weaker individuals. First encounter, I was about 6 or 7 years old. In the middle of recess he decided to bother me, thinking he could scare me. After telling him to leave me alone he tried to block my path. I gave him a good kick in the nuts and he never messed with me again. About 10 years later I ran into him, when I was out smoking a joint with a friend. We talked, we hung out, we smoked and had a great time, no hard feelings. Second, was about 14 or 15 years old, and in my third or fourth high school year, Dutch educational system. Teacher left the classroom, while everyone worked on stuff. Two guys sitting behind me were being annoying, trying to tighten a zip tie around my fingers, after grabbing my hand. After my first warning the more reasonable guy stopped, but the other just had to try again. When he grabbed my hand again, I stood up and knocked the color out of his face, literally. Classmates broke us up, and about a week later we both let it go. Now let me clarify, I was an am a small dude. I most likely would have lost the fight the second time if we weren't broken up. To me I just wouldn't let this person terrorize me for his amusement. TLDR. In both situations I simply stood up for myself despite of all the other kids being afraid to get beat up or upsetting the bully. Ain't nobody got time for that. And that's how they left me alone. Quick backstory, was on the small side in grade school slash high school in grade school, I was always in the cool crowd, but was never a bully went to an all boys high school in the inner city, and it was a whole new world freshman year of HS was in home a room and this black kid who looked like he was 30 sat in front of me, he had tried to bully me a few times, but my gab had let me escape. So he turns around one day and tells me to give him my calculator I told him fact no he smacked me so quick I didn't even see his hand my face was on fire with a sting and embarrassment as every other dude in the class started paying attention another white kid who was sitting near us got up and choked the bully guy he let the bully guy choke him back and they had a standoff until one let go the bully guy quit first the bully guy got expelled soon after but not for this the hero also got expelled that year for getting into a fight at a school dance. I always remained friends with the kid who helped me and years later, I ended up becoming best friend slash coworker slash roommate with his brother, who was also the best man at my wedding. The brothers are complete opposites, and whenever I see the hero guy we always talk about this story. Not just one bully but two bullies. One guy and one girl. I would get on the bus to go home, the guy was a senior, and acted like he was hot sheet acted like he was royalty or something. He would act like us not for a variety of issues for example he would rush me as I tried to store my backpack on racks above the seat, which was full of books, and was extremely heavy, yelling at me to hurry up, so he could move past me. One day I sat in his seat and he proceeded to tell me to move when there were plenty of other open seats. I got sick of his attitude, and told him to just sit somewhere else. Like a little twerp he did, while trying to tease me as well as doing thing, where you stick your finger some own's face and say I'm not touching you, I'm not touching in a snotty voice. The part where the girl comes in, is she witnessed this along with others riding the bus who joined in on teasing me. When it was time for me to get off she tried to trip as was leaving. I asked her what her problem was, and I gotta shut the fuck up. The next day, I thought I'd put some fear in them. My gym class was playing softball, so I could get away with bringing a bat from home. Got on the bus, and sat down as usual. Mr. Entitled Prince I like to call him once again tried to act tough, sarcastically accusing me bringing me a weapon to school. For you information, it's for my gym class, but I can show you how it works, if you'd like I said. He shut up pretty quickly. However Miss Snot Nose Tripper didn't get the memo, and decided to call me a spaz. I took offense to this, stood up and pump faked, like I was going to bust her head open. She knew I meant business. Mr. Entitled Prince decided to get all chivalrous yelling at me not to threaten a woman. Once I got off the bus, I headed to the locker rooms, to drop off my bat. I noticed Mr. Entitled Prince following me most likely to come beat me up. I managed to get far enough ahead of him to get to the locker rooms, so I could try to misdirect him, and leave without him seeing me. However once I got into the locker room he stopped in front of the only entrance slash exit and waited. Presumably because he knew I was there. After a few brief moments I think he started to look for me. 
I knew at this point running wasn't going to stop him. In a split second I went from flight to fight and managed to catch him off guard and swung my bat at his knee moderately hard. He fell to the ground yelling in agony holding his knee. I put on foot on his chest as he quieted down and told him here's the part where that sheet you pull on the bus, it stops and it stops now. Uh, the next time I'll aim for that pretty little face of yours I should note the school I was going to was pretty big, so it was pretty much impossible to know everyone by name. I should also note this was my first year at this school, so this guy identifying me was pretty much zero. In the end, turned out I messed up his knee pretty bad, and he was on the football team. I also learned that due to that injury he was benched for the rest of the year and couldn't play any more sports. I felt may have also ruined a couple of possible scholarships for him as well. How I didn't get in trouble, I'll never know for sure. When I was in middle school, there was this new kid who came in the middle of the year. The school I went to was mostly rich kids, but this new kid looked like he was a broke as sheet problem child. Anyway, shortly after he starts to bully me, and even though I tried to ignore him, it did kinda get to me. One thing I would really love to do at that school though was to buy cookies before school started. My school sold the most delicious chocolate chip cookies. Fresh out of the oven, with gooey chocolate and just the right amount of chewiness. So one day as I'm eating my delicious cookies, the problem kid comes up to me and starts staring down my cookies. I got really scared because I knew he was coming to take them away from me. He comes up to me, but rather than start messing with me like he usually does he simply says hey let me have a cookie and I'll never bother you again. That was probably one of the hardest decisions of my life. Do I believe him and risk losing one of my precious cookies? Or do I say fuck you and keep them all to myself? I ended up caving and gave him a cookie, but after that day the little sheep kept his word and never bothered me again. TLDR. Bully wanted a cookie. Gave him a cookie, and he never bothered me again. I'm a bit late to the party, but here we go. I was in year 11th, last year of UK secondary school, and I was going out with someone 6 years older than me, childhood friend who became something more, yay. Naturally, this divided the school opinion, some being supportive, others being weirded out, or disgusted by it. There was one guy, let's call him Cal who decided that this was the perfect opportunity to assert his dominance by completely tearing into me, calling me names, and making snide comments about such, and how it was I was very good e2 shoes and innocent at the time, so for me this was horrifying. It got to a point where I couldn't take it any longer, and I wanted to find a way to get back at him without causing violence. It just so happened that Cal had just been dumped by a popular girl he liked, and he was quite sore over it. So, in graphics class one day, when he was being particularly offensive, I turned around and said calmly, Cal, are you sad because you can't have me? Or are you jealous because you can't have a relationship like mine? The class went silent, then burst out laughing. Cal didn't bother me again having been embarrassed to the point where he moved seats away from me. My graphics teacher, who knew I wasn't usually one to stand up for myself, came over to me, patted me on the back, and said nice one. Bonus bonus, my boyfriend who I was being made fun of for having, ended up being my husband two years later, got married at 18. Four years later, still happy. When I was in 6th grade, our class took a field trip to a local museum. The bully, ah, had never really bothered me before, but liked to pick on my friends a lot. But for the bus ride to the museum he happened to be sitting right behind me as well as next to a girl he liked. This resulted in our flicking my ears and taunting me for the 30 minute ride. I kept my cool for the entire ride until we finally reached our destination and I thought he would get one last hit in and he smacked me upside the head. For me that was the final straw. I stood up turned around and punched our square in the jaw. Thankfully the teachers were preoccupied with the oncoming task of getting us off the bus and didn't notice my punch, but several students behind me saw and proceeded to up in typical fashion. I sat there with his mouth open in shock for several seconds. After recovering, he began to tell me how he was going to kill me after we got off of the bus. I was soon dead according to him, but we slowly got off the bus and nothing ever happened. I enjoyed the day at the museum, 
and R did not speak to me again until over a year later when he cornered me in the locker room of our middle school gym class and shook my hand and told me he respected me for what I did. I resisted the urge to roll my eyes when this happened because unlike a lot of these stories, R still continued to be a bully. He simply wasn't bullying me again. 8th grade wangster embarrassed me constantly. One day I walk in wearing flip flops, be hoping toward the farthest corner from my boss drop off point. This is before school starts. We are in a cafeteria and he followed me from the doors to the corner of the lunch room. He said my sandals look like lady sandals. I said they are his mom gave them to me. This prompted the following. He continues to be a count whilst following. I had been told, if I entered another fight at this point I would be arrested. I had been bullied and a kid spit on me. I put him in a headlock and tried to snap his neck by cranking him to the ground. Back to the gangster following me. He throws a punch at me in front of my friends. Not wanting to get caught fighting on camera I dodge the punch. Next punch I dodge again. The third punch I grab his fist. I throw him backward about a foot and he falls. He was about 5 feet tall, and I pushed him back by a foot. This means his head was 6 feet away from me. When he fell he hit his head on a table. I had blood on my collar from his head. He ran home clutching his head and crying. A bus full of our peers saw him crying. I calmly walk to the office and tell them there is a puddle of blood and they should get a janitor. They say what happened. I tell them a kid tried to fight me, and I split his head on a table. They watch the video and say he was clearly the instigator. I had my yearbook signed once to beat her. I'm 21 and I went out drinking tonight. I had a guy recognize me for that fight commending me. I then was given a job in an unrelated, not in exchange for showing my eye at the bar next door. I had three experiences. I went through and read most of the stories here and I must say I'm surprised I couldn't find anyone else that did what I did. I had one bully for maybe 5 years. He was a shorter kid, but that didn't stop him from picking on me when he had the chance. He very rarely ever physically bullied me, but he did humiliate me often, and he talked major sheet constantly. One day in the middle of class, no idea where the teacher was, he decided he wanted to take it up a notch. He talked more venomous sheet than usual, and I was in a foul enough mood to talk back. This was enough for him. So he got in my face, grabbed my shirt, and he started screaming for me to fight him. Ikmon, hit me. Fight me. I absolutely refused, remaining as calm as I could. No. I'm not going to fight you. There is literally no reason. If you want to hit me, that's fine. But I don't want to fight you. I don't want to hurt you. Fight me. Hit me. I'm not going to fight you, man. Why would you want that? I'm not going to hit you back. So if you want to hit me, go ahead. He let go of my shirt, kind of looking a little dazed, and he stormed off after that, not saying much more. The class was full of people, and they all just kind of stared in awe. The next day, when I was between classes, he approached me. He thanked me for refusing to fight him, and he apologized for picking on me for so long. We got along fairly well after that, even becoming something akin to friends. I'll save the other two stories for, if there is interest, as they are very similar. Hit puberty early and quickly. One summer passes, and I'm twice his height, have a deeper voice, and he's gotten only a few inches in width. Was edgy as fuck back then, and I think, when he tried to mess with me I said dude, I could snap your prepubescent neck like a twig, except without the word prepubescent, since I didn't know that. Some other word that meant the same thing that I made up on the spot, but he knew what I meant. Teacher heard me, gave me detention for it and nobody messed with me again, because the rumor spread that I was bullying him. Then this one cool guy wanted to test how I was, so he tapped me on the shoulder one day and then acted like he was going to punch me, stopping an inch from my face. Somehow I managed not to flinch at all, which then started spreading other rumors about me. Anyways, lots of other stuff happened, but by high school everyone thought I was a drugged up psycho who would beat the sheet out of anyone who crossed me and that I was involved in some drug related business at school. It didn't help that a lot of my group consisted of druggies and a dealer and that I actually had kind of a group of people around me like some sort of gang leader. But honestly, I kind of missed being the picked on guy. 
So in middle school there was this kid that joined our class in third year as far as I can remember. I was almost having fights with him weekly, but yeah after a while I just didn't give a shit anymore. I think he saw that, and he started to bully me. I was getting spit on, hit and other shit daily. Well that went on for 2 years, until we got both to the next school, where the bullying continued, but I now wasn't the only one who was bullied. The summer sports week came along, and he with a lot of other students left but some stayed, and I was one of them. Me and another guy who were bullied decided that we had enough, so we sat down with everyone and realized that he wasn't well liked. We wrote a letter with all the things that he has done, which included bullying, damaging school property and so on. The principal was shocked, cause she thought he was a good student. When he came back she got him into her office and guess what? He came out crying and apologizing to everyone. He apologized to me first. That's when it stopped, and I was somewhat forced to be friends with him for the rest of the year until he left. I wasn't very strong at that time so yeah. A few months ago I went to the prom of his new school. He didn't even recognize me. He asked who I was. I guess now we both changed. I'm stronger now, and I will not be bullied ever again. Also sorry English isn't my first language. I had been bullied all the way to year 10th, so I was 14 to 15 years of age, and it had just been break time. I had the usual beating and the girls lose from 5 of the popular girls in my year, stereotypical blonde hair, tanned, bank of mummy and addy, beachy, well you get the idea, I was in their English class, that they dragged me to buy my hair, literally. I will say that my teacher knew I was being bullied, and did as much as he possibly could to keep them away from me. He had kept me calm until I had a steel compass thrown at me. I promptly picked up the compass put it on the desk in front of him with blood coming from the top of my cheek. He got up, said in turning a blind eye this once, and walked out of the classroom. The head beach decided to take the opportunity to try and get another beating in. Until I grabbed hold of her throat, pinned her up against the wall, knocked a couple of her freshly white and teeth out, and broke her nose. My teacher walked back in told me to get my stuff and go to the head teacher's office. I was suspended until everybody's stories were gotten. Four days total. I came back and the head beach apologized to me. In fact we are best of friends now. Was frequently bullied in school. Being a year younger than my classmates, small and smart didn't help point this story happened in 6th grade. At lunch, we sat at assigned tables. The table next to mine was a bunch of 8th graders. There was one kid who constantly harassed and bullied. One day, he decided he'd steal my lunch. So, I went and told on him. I mean, this was the type of kid who was on his third or fourth lunch at this point. I was just looking out for him. The assistant principal came over, made him return the food. As soon as the authority figure left, he walked back over to me and threatened to beat me to a pulp after lunch. I told him to bring it on. I'm a coward, no idea why I said it, but I did. After lunch, my friends bailed on me. I walked up the stairs to my locker, and as I reached the top of the stairs, said bully came running up the stairs to fight me. We reached the top step at the same time, and he took a swing at me. He connected, and it hurt. But he was so overzealous with his follow through, that he lost footing on the stairs. He fell down the stairs. All the way to the bottom. I ran down beside him to make sure he wasn't dead. And I leaned in close and said, so, did I beat you up, or are you just that uncoordinated, that you can't walk upstairs? He left me alone after that. Another one, this kid teased me all through middle and high school. He'd do the normal sheet like faking with my homework, and calling me names, but he also drew comics, based on the nicknames he came up with, and would show them to everyone. I never saw them. In science we were assigned to be lab partners and I begged to be able to switch, no go. You have to learn to get along, it's just because he has a crush on you. My mother came in to see the teacher the next day and said, if you force them to work together, there will be blood on the floor and it won't be hers. Mom always had my back and knew that between my temper and my strength I could do some serious damage. Teacher let me switch. 10 years post high school, mom mentioned him to me when I was over for dinner. Do you remember Joe? God, yes, he was such an asshole. I hated him. Why would you bring him up? He's dead. 
he killed himself. I'm sad for whatever he struggled with, but I still resent the shitty way he treated me. This one is hard to believe. I couldn't believe it when it happened first grade at a private little Catholic school. Basically everyone has recess in the parking lot, but there are different sections for the different grades, with volunteer, parent, chaperones watching. Although sometimes there weren't enough parents, so some upperclassmen would get picked to watch the lower classes. This one guy, let's call him Bola, he was an 8th grader. Now he was a suck up, so the teachers liked him, but that meant he could screw with the younger kids when they weren't looking. Bola had your prototypical 90s haircut that you would see on younger kids. It looked like someone put a bowl upside down on his head, then cut off all the remaining hair. Anyway, in the first grade I had a good friend named Chucky. Chucky and I would bounce a kickball back and forth at recess almost every day. So this day, Bola is chaperone for the first grade kids. Now remember, he's in 8th grade, he basically towered over us. When the parents weren't looking, he stole our ball and threw it hard at Chucky. I was standing a little further away from Chucky, so I couldn't hear what was being said, but I saw Bola shove Chucky to the ground and then pick him back up. He left us alone for a little bit, but came back in between us again and shoved him again. Tiny little first grade me was pissed. I have an older brother and a younger brother. I knew what fun looked like and what bullying looked like. I ran up to Bola and shoved him. I could only reach as high as the middle of his back, and my shove was barely even noticeable. I turned around to walk away, and he started walking behind me, oh you want to shove me? And he shoved me forward. He kept shoving me forward, and each time I had to plant both of my feet and catch myself, and each time I was getting angrier. After the third shove, already having both of my feet planted, I bent at the knees and all in one motion I sprung up and backwards, spinning around, with my tiny little first grade fist clenched into a ball, swinging through on the highest arc I could manage, and at the very peak of my jump, clocked him perfectly in the jaw. I landed on my feet, with my tiny fists of fury balled up and ready, my right one hurting like all hell. I must have hit him hard enough, because although his hand went up to his chin, he stumbled sideways and landed on the small patch of grass nearby. He was completely shocked. Chucky had no idea how I managed to knock Bola down as he was behind Bola, but he was my first hand witness. Just then, the bell rang for recess to be over, so Chucky and I both sprinted back into the building. Bola was yelling at us as he stood back up claiming we'd get detention, but I think he was embarrassed enough that he never told anyone and he never picked on either of us again. It was the craziest luck. If I hadn't swung at the right height or swung too soon, there's no way I could have caught him. Still blows my mind to think about it. My friend has a pretty good one. Older guy sucker punches my friend, let's call him John, because he thinks John was making moves on his girl. John goes home with a black eye, which his mother then sees. She asks what happened, and he tells her. Later that evening his mother goes to a chocolate slash coffee shop that's in the mall. She usually went with her sister once or twice a week for coffee there, and was on good terms with the manager. The guy that sucker punched John also worked there as a cashier. She walks in, and he greets her, the usual how, can I help you? She asks his name to make sure who he is, and then my favorite part comes up. She reaches over the counter, she grew up on a farm, very strong woman, hauls him over the counter by his collar, and says if you ever touch my son again, you'll have me to answer to The manager comes over, and asks if everything's okay and John's mother says oh yes we are fine, but I'll have a coffee thanks. And then she took her coffee to a table near the register, and took her time drinking it, watching this guy the whole time. The end. TLDR moment of Eames is scary enough that it actually worked. From my experience the best way to deal with people like this is one to stand up for yourself and secondly inform a teacher. I had some numpties trying to bully me and one threw a knife when I was chilling with my group. I ignored it before but this was extremely dangerous. So I picked up the knife, one used for clay cutting screamed at how dangerous it was, and told him I was informing our head of year. He got royally barluxed, and never heard from him again. 
There have been times when I've stood up to bullies and other times when I've backed down to my eternal shame, but now I don't because the regret and disappointment in myself is more painful than any punch or kick I've ever taken. Times when I've stood up because I knew I was stronger and times where I've stood down because I felt I was weaker, I felt like a coward. It was worse losing a fight I never fought than losing a fight I was in. I'm not just talking physically, but mentally. But since doing martial arts it's helped, because it gave me confidence and pride, and most importantly integrity, to do the right thing, like in the old school kung fu films where the good guy always battled the stronger bad guy. Moreover when I think back, bullies are young, perhaps they are just doing what they've experienced themselves, bullies can have regret too, we all do in life I guess. I suppose what I'm trying to say is don't deal with bullies with malice, even if they deserve it, of course stand your ground, have your pride, but do the right thing. I'm in my mid-twenties now and luckily I don't have to deal with stuff like that, but damn how I wished I dealt with things differently when I was young, have more confidence in myself and the wisdom to deal with things better. I felt regret was a bad thing, but now I feel differently, regret reminds me of how I should do things the right way, and that regret fuels me to do the right thing. Like one time this guy rugby tackled a girl and I did nothing, shameful display, as a Japanese shogun would say. But now feeling that regret has made me adamant not to make that mistake again, later on when a guy at a bus stop spat at this girl, I grabbed him in anger and told him how dare he do such a thing. Another time a bunch of younger kids were bullying this little girl, I intervened, he told on his big brother who surrounded me with his group during lunch, but I stood my ground, I told him his brother was bullying a little girl, and I told him, if I saw his brother getting bullied I would do the same thing. I think he was confused, but they all backed down, it felt pretty good standing my ground. I still have a long ways to go to make up for that past mistake though. As JFK said, an error is not a mistake, unless you refuse to correct it. Anyhow I've displayed enough emotion for today, time for a cup of tea and some old school command and conquer. If only dogs could attack tanks, I would build an army of attack dogs, thanks to everyone for sharing their stories too. Colon. I work at a bar that is owned by the local Chechen mob. It's known as a drop bar because it's one of many different bars that will be randomly selected each night as the designated bar for all illegal proceeds to be dropped at and the mob guys will come in after closing and collect their proceeds, mostly cash. Anyway, this guy had been a real dirtbag to me for many months. He'd been threatening the life of my dog and even started physically threatening a girl I had just started seeing who just so happened to be his ex-girlfriend, as my luck would have it. He said all he wanted was $10,000, and he'd leave my dog alone and let me keep the poor pup. Then comes New Year's Eve. He shows up to the bar around 9 o'clock or so, and was with the girl that I was interested in, and she was obviously shaken, and didn't want to be with him. Well, it just so happens that the Chechens had decided that tonight my bar was going to be the drop bar for the evening. Of course, one of the busiest and highest volume nights for illegal money to come in. As the night progresses, everyone rings in the new year, and it gets close to our 2am closing time at which point the bar finally empties out, and it is just this one douchebag and the clearly threatened girl that I'd recently been seeing. He steps outside for a few seconds, and she whispers to me that something bad is gonna happen tonight and to watch out for this guy. Well, sure enough, just as the clock is about to strike two, he comes up to me with the girl, wrapped around his arm. I give him the 10k that we'd agreed upon for him to let me keep the dog in peace and tell him to leave. That's not good enough for this scumbag, and then he grabs her by the neck and said now how much for her, how much is she worth to you? I remind him of his agreement and tell him that he'd be wise to take the $10,000 and go home, but no, he keeps on going with his threats and demands I open up the safe to the drop box. It was at this moment that I just snapped. I couldn't take it anymore. This guy had been threatening me for months and I was not gonna let him keep on threatening me for many more months. He keeps demanding I open up the drop box and give him all the money, bad idea. I grabbed the 9mm pistol I had under the counter and shot him in the neck. He fell to his knees and I took one step forward and shot him in the head from behind the bar counter. That was the end of that nightmare of a person.
Little did I just can't believe Op didn't put a serious tag on this post. This happened less than a month ago. I'm 23 and Dave the new guy must be 35. I work on a swabbing rig as a swamper slash helper whatever you wanna call it. Dave who got laid off as a push for a service rig, which is the highest paid job slash most responsibility for a service rig. He claimed he was used to making 12k every two weeks and would just complain like a little beach all day every day about only making $25 an hour and constantly try to give me advice slash train me to be as good as him what a joke. And he only got the job because he is friends with my boss and my boss felt bad for him getting laid off. Anyway he was an asshole from day one, he had a bona for throwing sheet at me literally cow sheet or his own, or would use the compressed air and blow bird sheet off a well into my face. Or if we went into a shack well, which is filled with mice he would find dead mice to throw at me, but the worst was, when he got on top of the shack, and I was working below him, he dropped like a two pounds mouse nest of sheet, and piss and sticks and dirt and mouse fuzz onto the back of my neck, and just about killed himself with laughter. That was the last straw I was livid, I sat in the truck the rest of the day, when we weren't working, and every time he spoke I would ignore him. Until finally he ripped the door open and started by calling me a bussy, and that our operator said I don't like him. Before I could say anything he was jumping around like a loser saying, let's faking go you don't like me well let's settle it right now. I'm not a fighter by any means, but I stepped out of the truck and said alright I'll take a few rounds out out you. I ripped off my coveralls and stepped to him slapping my face and saying go ahead put one right here. He backed off and said he was just joking and why would I take him so seriously. After that he tried to be all friendly and when I told my boss what was going on he never worked with us again.